Okay, looks like we're back. Welcome, people. We are back with more of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We're going to pick up right from where we left off. And let's just say that we left off in a pretty concerning situation. Because our buddy was murdered. Uh, Kazuma, welcome to the stream, Rafkin. Kazuma was murdered. We've been arrested for it. Suzato is convinced that we did it. Well, semi-convinced. Either way, she's being a jerk. This guy is literally here just to cause problems. And this might be the single useful person in the place, which is worrisome since he is a crime scene thief. But anyway, show Umbreon, you say. Yeah, let's get out the Umbreon. I don't think you've come out since... What? Since we were fighting Malekith. He gave me some moral support during that fight. Um... We do have Kazuma's diary, and I don't know if I've actually examined it. Got a couple of random articles, one about this guy, who is a Russian revolutionary. One about this ballerina, who most likely stole that tiara that she's wearing there. We've got a picture of our murdered friend, and someone decided to try and write a message in Russian to explain away his death. So I really hope that doesn't take too long to clean up in the court. And there's this seal that we had stuck on the outside of the door, proving that we couldn't have been the one who did it. But of course we are still, you know, in handcuffs. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to present my badge. Is that the fabled Imperial Yumei University pin badge? I'm not sure if it's really fabled exactly. So, you're a genuine student, then. Sorry. Nothing like me with re my regular schooling. You're something much great. That's an interesting thing to say. Oh, you're accusing me of implying that. Is that what you're trying? What you were trying to say? Um, can I have my badge back, please? Ah, this is the paper seal that was stuck over the wardrobe doors this morning, isn't it? That's right. To try to stop the cabin steward opening it and discover up and discovering me. Wouldn't it have been better to write it in English if you didn't know Russian? Maybe, but Ofura paper amulets like this are part of our culture, Inspector. And I thought if I made it look creepy enough, people would be too scared to want to look inside. <laughs> it isn't easy being a stowaway, is it? Uh, that's true, he's like borderline stowaway, because he's here undercover. Like, he has the actual job, but he's got it under false pretenses. Um, you see this? Look at this photograph. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. <coughs> Oh dear, are you alright, Inspector? Yeah, sorry, I'm fine. I was hoping to hide my upset with a fit of coughing 
and spluttering, I'm usually very good at it. But trying to stifle my feelings seemed to have stifled my cough this time. It's all so sad. Asogi san was such a promising young man, the Empire had such high hopes for him. I had such high hopes for him, even though I'm just a detective. <coughs> We're all going to miss you, Kazuma. Hmm. He can't read Russian. sad thing is this guy is still probably the most useful person for us in this. Really? I showed the different one. It didn't even change the picture. And you know, I'm going to examine the diary. Okay, 123, I can hear a faint whistling sound. 135... What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. So what are your special orders this time, Inspector? Yes, and why are you dressed as a member of the crew? I mean, he's just going to say classified, right? He should just say classified. I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. I take full responsibility. For what? My orders were to act as Asogi san's bodyguard. It was Minister of Justice Jigoku, Jigoku who pushed for this overseas study tour to go ahead. And he entrusted me with ensuring that Asoki-san reached Great Britain without being assassinated. Assassinated? How could that even have been a possibility? I'm not sure. These are complicated times. There are tensions between the world's greatest powers. Minister Jigoku said we should be prepared for all eventualities. This is incredible. I don't believe it. Kazuma-sama was assassinated? Obviously, we couldn't give Asogi-san a visible security escort. Which is why I'm undercover now, posing as one of the crew. I see. And I didn't take my eyes off him the entire time we've been on board, from morning until night, every day. But I never imagined what it would happen here inside his own cabin. Not here on the first class deck. <laughs> I've failed miserably at my assignment, and Asogi san is dead as a result. I'm a disgrace. All I can do is humbly apologize. Inspector. So if there's anything at all that I can do to help now, just say the word. Can we have permission to investigate the room next door? We're doing what we can to investigate Kazuma's death ourselves. I thought you might be. You didn't do it, did you? You're not the killer? Of course not. We'd really like to investigate the cabin next door. Yes, so we need to be allowed out of this cabin. I'm sorry. What? You've been deemed a risk to the ship's safety. If you moved even to touch if you move to even touch the handle of the cabin door. That stormy looking seaman there would surely snap your neck in two. Suppose I'm not just a so a stowaway now. They think I'm a murderer as well.
Would it be possible to give me something to work with, do you think? I'm going to need something persuasive. What do you mean? If I had a solid reason why the next door cabin should be investigated, for example, I'd do everything I could to persuade the captain to allow it. Really, I'd lay my life on the line if I had to. But I don't see how. I see how. There may be a way. What? Really? Think of how you've tried to persuade me of your innocence, Naruhoto san, by presenting me with a piece of evidence that you already had in your possession. Evidence. It's just the same as when you were in court. You must have done it many times during your trial. Simply select the present panel and choose some evidence that Inspector Hosonaga could use. So, evidence that would give us a viable reason to investigate the next door cabin, is it? Alright, yes. I think I might know what we can use. to go to the present option to do it. What's that? It's Kazuma's diary. Just before he died, Kazuma Sama wrote something rather strange in his diary. Strange? In what way? He wrote what looks like some kind of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. <clears throat> a speckled band. That is strange. Yes, we're still trying to work out what he meant by that, but what I'd like to know is... Don't tell me. The ventilator, is it? You're very astute, Inspector. The ventilator clearly joins to the next door cabin. That's right, so if we could investigate in there, we might be able to work out what that speckled band was. So did they release a snake into here? Is that what happened? Because there was mention of a snake in the intro. Alright then. I can't leave this cabin at the moment. I'm stuck here until we arrive at the next port. The captain has given me strict orders to guard the scene of the crime, you see. I'll have to entrust the investigation to you. Really? You're willing to do that? Yes, as long as you don't leave the first-class cabin area. I'm afraid I can't remove those handcuffs, though. But what about the captain? Aren't you going against his direct orders? I'm a man of my word. And I promise you that I'll lay my life on the line if that's what it takes to convince the captain. After all, I failed to keep Asogi-san safe. This is the least I can do. Thank you. Seize the moment, then, Naruhoto-san. January 9th, 7.48 a.m. SS Beria, First class cabin passageway. Well, I'm finally out of that cabin. I have to admit, this isn't quite what I was expecting. It's less spacious out here than I thought it would be, and this is the most luxurious accommodation. Yes, indeed. Kazuma Sama was being sent on this study tour by the government. That's why he was being put up in a first class cabin. Even still, this is about twice as large as my accommodation in steerage. Really? That must be off? Oh, look over there. It's another crewman keeping watch. He and he looks enormous, even if he is sitting down. I don't know why his face is striped. We saw that in the intro, too. He had stripes running diagonally across his face. And that's kind of confusing. 
Gorn XM leads to the second class accommodation. I suppose he's making sure that no one comes in here who shouldn't. I suppose, like people in handcuffs. Our Odasan, you look like a little boy visiting a toy shop for the first time. I would have thought you'd be used to the shit by now. We've been at sea for two weeks. Old. I've been in a closet. Well, yes, I know. But the thing is, I was ins inside Kazuma's trunk when I first came aboard. And ever since then, I've been shot up inside that little wardrobe. It must have been a very trying time for you. Please, don't give me that pitying look. Maria is a large-scale steamship with a triple-skinned hull. Hull. He's questioning... The, he's wondering about the principle of buoyancy. that's not how Japan works it's actually sitting on the floor of the sea ship protocols I might appreciate the compliment. Last night's log is mostly blank. Nothing to report. Okay, why didn't that get added to the court record? Guess cheese. Oh. <laughs> you can't eat it, Naruto san. The trap will snap shut on your fingers. <laughs> Suppose you're right. I mean, it's not that hard to hold back a mouse trap while you get the stuff out of it. actually going to try it, were you? All I've had to eat for the past couple of weeks is Kazuma's leftovers. I don't know how hungry I've been in that wardrobe. First class cabin number one. How to make a stowaway feel small, don't you? Her cabin is 539. How many cabins are there? Probably around 600, I would say, based on her number. What do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape, isn't it? Emergency alarm. Best not to touch it. Press only in times of emergency. Sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship and brings the vessel to a complete stop. I hope it doesn't do that automatically because that would be a terrible design choice. Just give whoever happens to be walking past the alarm 
the freedom to tell the ship to stop. Are you, oh, this I have to see. What are you doing? You mustn't touch it. But this is an emergency situation. Just look at these handcuffs. No, full well, that's not what the alarm is for. Yeah, if she throws you this time, you deserve it. If you have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect anyone else. Fine, I'm going for that cheese then. Yeah, you can probably see now. He's got stripes across his face. I mean, it looks like sunburn lines, but like, how did they happen in that shape? Excuse me, but could I ask you something? Yo, you little store murder. Murderer. Hey, welcome to the stream, Brittle. That wasn't a good start, was it? Alright, let me try instead. Also, it might take me a minute to get my Russian accent in, and even then, like I said last time, it's not good. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps, perhaps ask something of you? Yo, your little third-class lady's mate. Oh. You seem to have caught the sailor on a bad day, Susato san. I'm not sailor. My, mo my mother gave me name. I am Senior Crewman, Beef Stroganov. Well, the best thing is just to avoid eye contact, I think. Uh, Mr. Stroganov? About this first class cabin, cabin area. Here we are in finest part of Buria steamship for very important persons. What sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret, many important persons. That is why I am always guarding this place. That's amazing. But somehow, I let stupid store inside. I want to pick you up and throw you in ocean, but Stroganoff is not an. Thank you. If I may, I was wondering, is the cabin next to Mr. Osogi's currently occupied? Ah. Ha. And Suzato-san, did you understand that, or was that da? Sounded like da, which I believe means yes. I think it's probably Russian for yes, or no. One of the two. Genius. It is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Well, it sounds like there's somebody in the next door cabin at least. Yes, it's tantalizing. Okay, before I finish, I'm going to examine the rest of the things. Second class door. I was thinking about making a run for it, just for a moment. Things aren't exactly going well for me. I might be wrong, but I imagine the moment you reach for the handle of the door, that burly seaman would surely shoot you dead. Yeah, and besides, you're on a ship at sea, and with your hands like that, there's no way you're swimming anywhere. Like, he's cuffed together so that his hands are forced facing up. That is a pretty awful position for swimming even if you allow for him to be a pretty good swimmer or something
scroll get off? Oh, um... Excuse me, we, um, need to get inside this cabin here. The sailor's eyes speak volumes. They're clearly saying keep out. That's what I wrote on the sign we put over the wardrobe doors. Well, this man's version is definitely more effective. Doesn't look like he's going to let us pass. Okay, so I don't think there's anything else to examine in the hall, so we can probably go ahead and finish discussing with this guy. Could you tell us who's traveling in the cabin next to Mr. Asogi's? His name is Mr. Grimesby Roylott. He is a very important Western gentleman. A Western gentleman? Do not think about it. He has nothing to do with the murder of the student boy. How can you be so sure about that? Mr. Roylott is authentic Western gentleman. Such a man would have no interest in lowly students from insignificant Far East islands. That was rude. You tell us when Mr. Roylock came aboard? That is not your business. Come to think of it, even though we've been at sea for two weeks now, and I've been in Cosmo's cabin the entire time, I've never once heard anything from the next door cabin. I even felt like there's anyone there. Presumably, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first-class cabins, he must be rather important, is that right? Bah. Oh. That is not your business. Um, are you on watch here all the time, Siemens Stroganoff? Bah, all time, so criminals like you cannot come in, or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is sad about student boy. You don't watch last night as well? When does he sleep? Of course. And did you notice anything at the time? Anything unusual? Yeah. Do you understand that, Susato-san? It was clearly a no. I saw nothing unusual. Nothing at all. And you didn't hear any strange noise? Oh, he's looking away. What is this, L.A. Noir? Which I still have never played. I've got it. I want to play it at some point. Probably not on stream. It's one of those games that I've got lined up for myself in my own time, but I've never gotten around to it. Ugh. Didn't hear any strange noises or sense anything was wrong in some way? I said no. Sorry. Not so sure. I could have sworn that he wouldn't catch my eye for him. This is enough. I cannot say more now. It is time for me to report to Captain. You must return to Cabin. Yes, alright. Old head to second class area. He's staying locked at all times. You escape when lobster whistles on top of the mountain. Or as English say, when pigs fly. Is that an actual Russian expression when lobster whistles on top of the mountain? Good, now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. <clears throat> this is it. This is the cabin next to ours, the one the ventilator connects to. 
Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma-sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe whoever's in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. No answer. We're out of luck, it seems. There's no one in there to help with our inquiries. How annoying. Ah! What was that? It came from inside the cabin. Such a high-pitched scream. It must have been a woman. It's her Lock Sholmes, isn't it? Stand aside. I'm about to break the door down. Mr. Sholmes. I shan't be stopped when the fit is on me. I revel in kicking doors off their hinges. Please wait, Mr. Sholmes. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. It doesn't? And how can I use... Then how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? What prey can I kick? I think we should go in. There's no time to think about stress relief. Okay, but maybe Ryu shouldn't be the one to rush in first. Given, I imagine it would panic someone pretty greatly to have someone rush into their cabin handcuffed. And disheveled from spending two weeks in a wardrobe. Because I cannot imagine that he's very well put together at this point. SS Beria, first class cabin number two. Oh, who are you? A Western gentleman? This man looks Russian to me. We heard a woman scream. A woman. Don't be upset. Upset. As you can see, there is nobody but me in this cabin. True, this old man does appear to be the only person in here. But in that case, who just screamed? Get out, all of you, now. Please excuse the intrusion, but you're, Miss B. Gr you're Mr. Grimes B. Roylaw, I believe. <coughs> yes, that's me, and you are. I'm the one and only, the actual Herlock Sholmes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. I'm a great, I'm a great detective among great detectives. One who adorns the covers of popular magazines, no less. So I assure you, you may trust me completely. Man uses that magazine like a business card. A detective? I do not trust detectives. We distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there wouldn't appear to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. However, there is a large bag. Thank you for the hydrate last born. I'm just I've just been struck by an extreme amount of stupidity. Don't be stupid. How could anyone fit in small trunk like that? Well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk. Don't look at me. My, did you see that, Mr. Naruto? Yes, the case just shook. Leave. No, otherwise, I'll call this steward. So this is Cosmo's neighbor, Mr. Grimes B. Roylot. There's no doubt about it. This strange Russian man is hiding something. Couldn't agree more. See if we can find some clues before that burly sailor returns. Oh my gosh. Why can't I examine this bag? It is literally the one thing worth examining in this place.
Yeah, somehow... He's got a plate on the floor. And for some reason... Oh, that's be... It's already checked off because I'm going to get the same reaction out of him regardless. Also, why are his books all tipped over? There must have been a disturbance in his cabin as well. Seriously, why can't I investigate the one thing in this room worth investigating? Welcome to the stream, B. Do you have a moment, please, Mr. Sholmes? You need only address me as Sholmes. That's what I just did, didn't I? Isn't it? Well, Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing in there? Why, I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed, I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you would need to call my great powers of detection into service. Oh, and it would seem that the hour is upon us now. The time has come. Am I mistaken? Well, no, actually, you're spot on for once. Observe closely. Our Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Roylott, is clearly trying to hide something. And do you know what the most ef what is the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Why? The truth, of course. Though it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Okay, so is the solution really just presenting him with this image that looks somewhat like him? Because it's definitely a different person. The nose is completely different. Well then, what you are about to see may well astound you. For I am about to apply my great detect my great detective's great admired great deduction to the case. Greatly admired. Alright, Umbreon, down you get. Could this man be a more hackney portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? Hackney portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? From time to, t from time, to time, it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness? Or Russian on account of his dubiousness. That's... That's vaguely racist. I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you or anyone. That's right, and Mr. Sholmes... I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on the first meeting. But I once read... It is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Shh. Shh. I must have complete silence. What are you doing? Peering at my face like that. Ah, oh, just as I thought. Yes. I have quite made up my mind now. Hmm? There can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Roylott, I have reached two incontrovertible conclusions. I mean, the last time you reached two incontrovertible conclusions, you concluded that I was Russian, recently departed from the Middle East, rather than Canadian, recently departed from Japan. So, 
I'm not confident in this. But you might make him laugh, which might distract him, him long enough for us to open the case. What? What do you mean? Number one, your true identity is that of a villain. Using those shears, you are about to end the existence of something most dear. Are you not? Oh? And number two, the other conclusions I have drawn. You are at the at this very moment, no less, in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize that you have been discovered. Does it not? Ah! Oh, Naruhoto-san, I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Shulm's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction? Nothing can deceive Mr. Sholmes. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. He deduced that I was Russian. What? What an ineffable twaddle. Oh yes, I've read about it countless times in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And now I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. I can hardly believe it, but all the color is drained from Mr. Roylott's face. Looks like somehow both of Mr. Sholm's conclusions were right. Ow! Oh, how could you? How could I possibly know such things you wish to say? Very well, then. I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So do I cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us born, board the, trail, the train of reasoning. Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. Oh my. Topic 1, Old Man's Identity. So, the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roylott, obviously what catches the eye in the first place is the enormous pair of shears in your hand. Now we ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you sport. Now, moving on. The question then begged is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Roylott? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper. In particular, the fascinating front page article. Which would appear which it would appear you have also read, Mr. Roylott. So are we actually claiming that he's the same guy? Because they look very different. The guy has a different mustache, different nose shape, different head shape, his face is much longer. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. I'm wondering now, did he read the paper and realize that he looks a little bit like the revolutionary? And so he was going to trim his beard in order to avoid unwanted scrutiny? In translation, the headline reads, Revolutionary Vilim Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article possesses an extremely copious beard. 
Having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the fearsome Russian revolutionary himself, Vilan Bolshevik. I wonder if he realize. I wonder if he just goes around ask, telling everyone that they are Vilan Bolshevik. Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand. Topic two: wrongdoing. Now, as for my second conclusion, you are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime? Over there. Oh yes, Mr. Roylott. Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. Ah. And I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sit before our very eyes. Yes, the traveling case. Like, there's no way that the ballerina has managed to fold herself up inside there, is there? Like, even for a gymnast, that's far too small. It is the time, it is time, I think, that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. No, I refuse. What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation, a young la a young lady, perhaps, one slight enough to fit therein. Don't be upset. And what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup d'oeuvre coup betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your traveling case can be equally found in the passages in the pages of this newspaper. For there is another most stimulating article. If we turn from the fleeing revolutionary to the back page. Why do I get the feeling that the only re that the reason he only knows about the front and back pages is because he never bothered to open the paper? Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavik Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us to but one conclusion. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nick the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlo Pavlova. Okay, now to open the case and see that he is very obviously wrong. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this Russian enigma, Elementsky. <sighs> Suzato-san, that wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories of are full of Mr. Sholmes' brilliant deductions, you know. But that did seem a little different somehow. Excuse me, Mr. Sholmes, could you come over here a moment? Pray, what can I do for you? It's about your deductions. Would you mind... Not at all. Go. Well, to start with, there's the newspaper article. I think we had the same discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other. 
Ah, oh, yes, I recall our discussion earlier. At the time, I believe I told you. That the man is a revolutionary. Well, well able to revolutionize his own appearance. In fairness to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Roylott does look more like this man than you do. That's not the point. And another thing, the part about him abducting the ballerina. Indeed, a truly startling revelation. At first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just at first glance, it is too small. Clearly. You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old child into that case, even if you... Ryu, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Don't try and engage the age of child you could fit into that box. That is so concerning. Like, we do not want to cram children into boxes. <laughs> I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? You mean you don't know? No, the young lady is 15. No, I didn't know. How could I? Now, what I do think is the case is that our mysterious gentleman is the missing ballerina. No, I think that's a more likely explanation, but also not that likely. Well, if she's 15, then 10 years worth of her would be poking out from... <laughs> Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order pr to promote a certain lith litheness in their bodies. Vinegar. For such a sour bunch, it would surely be simplicity itself to contort oneself in the into the confines of that small case. Oh dear, you might be thinking of contortionists in the circus, Mr. Sholmes. This whole thing is turning into a circus. Mr. Naruhoto, something occurred to me about Mr. Sholmes' deductions just now. I think his powers of observation are, well, magical. You're doing this just to annoy me, aren't you? She's gotta be doing this to annoy me, right? Like, there's... There's no way she can bounce from an obviously intelligent and capable human being to this... ...so fast. It's just where he directs his attention and his logic that seem a little off. Your idea of a little off may be a little off itself, Miss Suzuto. Uh, that's the trick, last form. Uh, they aren't. They're lizards. Everyone knows the circus hires lizard people. It's just one or two key words in his discuss deductions that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps tactfully switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Hmm, switch some key words in his deductions. Yes, but very tactfully. I feel sure if we could do that, we'd unlock the true genius of Mr. Sholm's great deduction. Precisely the thought that was going through my own mind. This man is a lot of work. At times, I wonder how anyone puts up with me. <laughs> I really don't want to. It's not that funny. Ah, oh, and you, my good fellow. Sorry? Take a moment to look at your wrists. Has he picked the locks on my handcuffs somehow? My wrists? It would probably be best if those were still on. Like, it's not a comfortable scenario, but, like, I should cooperate until, you know, my trial. How did... I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me in our 
dance of deduction. I don't believe it. Mr. Sholmes, you're a marvel. And don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrists when we are finished. Okay, no, that's actually fair. I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. No, Ryu, let's get the cuffs back on. You haven't been released, and it's in your best interest to cooperate. So, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. Course correction. What catches the eye? So I think this is basically like a mini cross examination. you really use shears like that to cut off a beard. I doubt that's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't sit quite right it doesn't quite sit right with me though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Roylot with Mr. Roylot either. Which means I suppose that the deduction is wrong. Let's try to sit switch a keyword in here. See if it helps matters. Start by taking a long, hard look at Mr. Roylot. Okay. He was going to use those shears for. He is the ballerina. Oh my gosh, he really is the ballerina. Yes. <clears throat> We're on the verge of using the shears to cut away the golden locks you sport. Indeed, you have, you have identified the precise detail I was intending to expose. Such lush golden hair certainly does not befit an old man. You're not a man at all, you're a woman, and judging from the length and sheen of your hair, one's still very much in her youth. Oh no. If only I had managed to cut off my hair, no one would have sus suspected. Oh, I, I'm forgetting his ac I'm forgetting her accent. The question then begged is this: Why would you desire to rid yourself of these magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. Okay, I'm going to mash through this. Why are you staring at me like that? Yes, it was a surprise. <laughs> you're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? You look like you're in your element as you dance around the room deducing facts with Mr. Scholz. I'm just doing what we agreed. I'm not having fun or anything. <laughs> This is strictly business. Not strictly com... I'm assuming that's not strictly comedy. 
Yes, yes, I understand. Say no more. Well, anyway, let's focus on this next part of Mr. Sherlock Holmes, Mr. Sholmes' discuss deduction, shall we? Evidence that he's picked out doesn't fit the facts. Can't be the merciless revolutionary. Switch that evidence for something else. Switch it for the article about the ballerina. The evidence that reveals your true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. That's right, you've hit the nail. That's right, you've hit the nail on the head. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavik Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Is it Novavik or Novavich? I'm not sure. It would appear we are finally able to address you by your true name. Yes, because your true identity is that of Novavik Ballet's prima ballerina, Miss Nikolina Pav Pavlova. Just about stabbed herself in the head. Thank you for the hydrate, Lastborn. Wait. What happened to her nose? Did it come off with the glasses? I looked away for a second and suddenly her nose had changed shape. You're right. My name, my real name is Nina. Nick, I mean, Nikolina Pavlo, Pavlova. But please, I beg you, do not tell anyone. I mean, you are actively stealing a very valuable tiara, but anyway. Now, as for my secondary conclusion. You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime over there. Oh yes, Miss Pavlova. Taken unawares, people, blah blah blah. And I assure you, the eyes speak blah blah blah. Let's get to the part that we actually have to change. Proof of your crime. This woman is the ballerina and she's right in front of our eyes, so clearly she can't be inside that traveling case as well. No, that's right. It seems she wasn't abducted at all. In which case, what is the crime this young woman is apparently committing? Let's see, I'm going to have to step in and fix the great detective's mistake again. There must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Ah, uh, there we are. Really? It was just sitting there. Yes! Okay, but why did her why did her tiara or why did her traveling case shake? The proof of your crime is surely this tiara. I believe, I believe this tiara is worn on stage by dancers in the Novavik Ballet, is it not? 
Indeed, it would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in this newspaper article. <laughs> and if the reporting is to, is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rupees. In summary, the crime you have committed is theft. Oh no! Yes, you left your ballet troupe unlawfully taking that precious tiara with you. Ah! Ah! I have no one. No family. No friends. I am all alone. And I need money. But I did not steal the tiara. It was a present from, how do you say, an heir of Prussia. It belongs to me. This girl is only 15 years old and she's run away all by herself. She must have been extremely lonely. Alright, I will tell you everything. There is no point in hiding it now. Come, come, let us not be hasty. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you. Mystery? What? What do you mean? You have staunchly refused to open this case of yours in our presence. It is reasonable to conclude, therefore, that there exists some reason why you wish it to remain closed. Is that not so, Miss Pavlova? Um, my dear girl, there is no sense in playing games with me. Nothing escapes my attention. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case, even before I have ever laid eyes on them. Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Oh, she's going to have something in her case that incriminates her. I'm obviously going to be released and not charged, and charges are going to be pressed against her, and we're going to have to defend her. Got it. Your Crayless coup d'olay betrays you. Okay, hang on. I'm going to look up what in the world that is. Literal meaning is stroke of the eye. <laughs> a glance that takes in a comprehensive view. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the books on the shelf. He's completely changed tack with his deduction now. I think Mr. Sholmes is adapting his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Maybe, but why has he suddenly brought the bookshelf into all of this? It's just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? It doesn't seem... <laughs> seem likely that the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case would have been written in a book that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true, but still, Miss Pavlo Pavlova certainly did cast her eyes in that direction. I noticed it myself. There has to be another reason why she wouldn't why she won't open her case, and it must be somewhere in the same area if that's where her gaze was involuntarily drawn. I agree, that's the only answer. Whatever she has hidden should be revealed by following her gaze in the direction of the bookcase. Oh, right, because the rules of passage include no pets. Yes. 
Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from carriage on this vessel. That is the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. I... As we've seen, the trunk wobbles from time to time, but no weapons or other dangerous item would move of its own accord. Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlova. Inside your traveling case... ...is the last item listed as forbidden in the vessel's rules of passage. A pet. Ah! I keep thinking she's about to take off the hat. Because she reaches up like this. That's a very remove hat motion. Possession of a prohibited animal. I mean, don't get me wrong, the hat works, but, like... She keeps looking like she's about to remove it. Also, like, she is indoors. She could remove the hat and the gloves. Like, it all seems very warm. And she already removed her wig. So clearly you aren't who you said you were. No, I'm not Grimsby Royalot. My real name is Nikolina Pavlova. Everything you said was correct. You absconded during one of your ballet company's performances in order to escape your homeland. Later that same night you stole aboard this vessel. Which couldn't have been easy. The Beria is... The Beria is a huge steamship with a vast crew. Could she really have snuck on board without being noticed? You know, she bought a ticket. She had legal passage, but under a fake name. In order to obscure your true identity, you somewhat reckless you somewhat recklessly took the guise of an old gentleman, and you intended to sever all links with your past by severing your long hair. Why has it taken her fifteen days to do so? We have been at sea for fifteen. I mean, even if she had gotten on here the last night, she would have had the chance to do it before. Hey, to a woman, hair is no trifling matter. My personal recommendation is to leave well alone. So, if it was just you about to cut off your own hair, who was it that let out the scream we heard from outside the cabin? That veritable tinkling of a bell? Why, none other than this young lady, naturally. More like a full set of pipes, if you ask me. Thank you for the hydrate, lastborn. I was so scared when they came away in Shing. When I ran away in Shing. I was so scared when I ran away in Shanghai. I was sure they would come looking for me. That is why I decided to, how do you say, disgust myself? So no one would recognize me? As a result, you transformed yourself into that questionable old man? I see. I put on the fur hat and fake beard. Then, just before you came in here, I saw in the newspaper, right on the page, there was a picture of me. I was so frightened. I couldn't stop from screaming. I knew that if I didn't change my appearances completely, they would find me. So I decided to cut my hair as fastly as possible. I picked up the scissors in my hand and she cut herself. At that precise moment, we walked in through the annoying, the unlocked cabin door. But she screamed before we did that. Oh wait, right. 
Things happen like that. Things happen like that sometimes, don't they? Things do indeed happen like that from time to time. My Russian accent could use a lot of work, to be honest. I'm not especially good at it. I can't keep focused on it, especially... It's one thing to bounce between Russian and my more or less normal voice, which is what I've given Ryu because he's... Which is what I give to most of the most talkative characters here. But... When I'm trying to bounce between... Nicolina and Sholmes <laughs> it's trying to bounce from a poor Russian accent to a semi-decent British accent that admittedly keeps changing like I've gone through probably half a dozen regional British dialects regional British accents at this point and I can't keep it straight <laughs> Are those two even talking about the same thing? There's just one more thing that I'd like to know. What exactly do you have inside your traveling case? You are right. It is my dear friend inside. My only friend in the whole world. Please, don't tell anyone. If the captain finds out, if you say to any of the crew, your secret is safe with us, I assure you, but in return, you must tell us in as much detail as you can muster about the events of last night. <laughs> yes, all right. I will tell you. Well, Mr. Naruhoto, wasn't it something, Mr. Sholm's great deduction? It was certainly something, yes. I'm just not entirely sure what. But at least Miss Pavlova has agreed to tell us what she knows. That's incredible. Indeed, it is incredible. Ah, and one more thing. Oh, yes, what? Observe your wrists. My... No, that's reasonable. Your hands are cuffed again. What? But how? Like... True to my word, I have restored your shackles. When and why? There is still a shadow of guilt cast over you, Mr. Naruhodo. I'm sorry to say, it can't be helped at the moment. Make up your mind if you're going to be nice to me or a jerk. Come on, Susa Susan. Can't it? Really? Anyway, let's listen to what Miss Pavlova has to say. One sec. I can't go on not knowing. I have to find out what the speckled band that Kazuma-sama wrote about in his diary really was. Okay, but seriously, why can't I investigate that bag? she gives the same reaction if I try and look at her door. Really? 
I can't touch her door. I can't look at the ship rules. <laughs> well, that explains the dish on the floor. It is for a pet. Okay, but first of all, I'm a student. <laughs> if you're determined to flaunt your Yume badge, at least choose a Japanese person who might recognize it. <laughs> Miss Suzuto, can I show <laughs> Oh, that was the correct response, Ryu. <laughs> Maybe later. Oh, I could show Inspector Hosonaga, too. <laughs> oh, wait, I wonder how she reacts to the article about her. Miss Pavlova, about this article. It looks so beautiful, like a fairy. I'm scared if... I'm scared if my picture is in the newspapers. You poor girl. She's so young, just 15 years old, for her to have run away all by herself? She must have felt very, very alone. Did you know about this merciless revolutionary already? No. But when I saw the picture, I couldn't believe it. He looks just like me in my disguise. Am I the only one around here with eyes? The other man, the one wearing the brown, he also said so. He said we looked the same. Yes, he says a lot of things, but I have a strong feeling that besides you and the great detective, you wouldn't find another soul on this ocean who thinks there's any similarity there. Like, there's similarity, sure. They looked similar, but they definitely weren't the same person. Mr. Naruhoda, I won't allow you to speak ill of Mr. Sholmes. Well, I mean, that's tough. I'm gonna keep doing it. One sec. Sorry about that. I don't mean to keep ducking away. No, no, I wouldn't dream of it. Alright, what happened last night? Did you know that someone was killed in the cabin next door to this one last night? One of the crewmen told me this morning when I was eating breakfast. The man, who the man who died, he was a friend of mine. That's why we're trying to find out what happened. Did you notice anything unusual last night? Perhaps you heard a strange noise, for example? Perhaps people talking? Perhaps the ship was absorbed in a wild tempest? Perhaps a steam engine... I think we would know about that if that happened. Perhaps everyone on the board would have noticed if that had happened. Miss Pavlova, is there anything you can tell us? I don't know. I'm sorry, but all I could think about last night was what I had done and whether they would find me. I didn't notice anything that was happening around. Oh, I see. You've run away from your ballet company, haven't you? The Novavik Ballet? I think it must be Novavich. That sounds more Russian. 
Nova Beach. Yes, I am traveling to Great Britain, and from there, I want to go to America. I will never dance again. I want to forget everything about the ballet. I will start a new life. You wish to forget? A challenging proposition when you have that striking tiara as a reminder. But the tiara is mine. I need it to leave. I have no money of my own. The Novavish Ballet gives us only a little food and water, and we must dance all over the world. I had to run away. I had no choice. If I stayed, it would have killed me. Okay. With recognition of that, why did you run away while you were in Russia instead of waiting until they toured somewhere that you were trying to get to? Seems like letting that for making them take you where you wanted to go would have been a smarter choice. Then again, I don't know what her situation was, so... So you ran away to protect yourself. Yes, and the crew of this ship, they've all been kind to me. They let me come aboard, and they said I could hide in this cabin. If that is indeed the truth, Miss Pavlova, it creates a most intriguing conundrum. Yes, it does. What do you think about it, Mr. Naruhodo? Me? Oh, well, yes, of course. I think we should hear Miss Pavlova's explanation. To what conundrum, I'm not sure, but... <sighs> Miss Pavlova, allow me to pose you a... Allow me to pose you a riddle. According to this newspaper, it was only yesterday that you absconded from the ballet. Now, that being the case, it must have been last night that you boarded this vessel. However, the SS Beria stopped by no port last night. Ah, that's it, of course. Her ballet is performing on the ship, isn't it? Wait, but that doesn't really make sense anyway. So how is it, pray, that you come to be aboard? Yeah, no, her ballet performing aboard the ship doesn't make sense either, because then they would just be searching the ship. It would be so much easier to find her and figure out where she was. It's such a limited area, I'm sure they could get a search taken care of. Now that I think about it, the crewman outside the cabin acted very strangely when we mentioned that. It was just after we asked him about when the occupant of this cabin came aboard. That is not your business. Yes, you're right. He did seem to be hiding something. An angel descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the stage. Sorry, what was that? It is how the Russian newspapers describe one of my performances. And that is how I came here, too. I descended from the heavens. Because I am an angel. Considering English your mother tongue your, isn't your mother tongue, your description is very vivid. So are you saying that you flew? Mr. Sholmes once said I can never resist a, a touch of the dramatic. It seems Miss Pavlova is the same. 
A genius descended from the heavens bringing grace and beauty to detection. Words once said about myself. A quote from the one from wonderfully extravagant advertisement for the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, in fact. Somehow I doubt this. Yes, yes, Mr. Showy. Anyway, it doesn't look like Miss Pavlova is going to tell us what really happened. And I don't have any evidence to confront her with. So the friend you mentioned is inside your traveling case, is that right? I don't think animals are allowed on board according to the rules of passage. Oh please, don't tell. Don't tell any of the crew. If they found my precious... Then the burly Russians would bestir themselves in unison to throw you and your case overboard, no doubt. Ah! So reassuring, Mr. Sholmes. But what sort of pet is your friend? A little puppy? It is, isn't it? Nope. It's a cat, I'm thinking. Because, if we take a look in the court record... There was a speckled band dangling from the ventilator grill. Now the obvious explanations are perhaps a snake or the tail of a cat. And I think she's a lot more likely to be carrying a cat. Maybe an adorable little rabbit? Ah, you credit Russia as a small as a land with small rabbits, do you? Oh. Don't they have small rabbits there, then? You may well ask. I have no idea. Uh, you two are miserable bunglers when it comes to understanding the nature of young ballerina's friends. Isn't it obvious? It must be a chicken. Really? Consider the benefits. A rousing wake-up call with daily fresh eggs, and when adversity, and when adversity stru strikes, it could satisfy the needs of sustenance. Most people don't eat their friends, gotta be honest here. So you'd eat your friends, I'll remember that. Well, it would appear this friend's identity is a closely guarded secret not to be revealed. She obviously doesn't quite trust us yet. Something I should like to show her, I think. Maybe she might be able to shed some light on it. And now it's time to present her the diary. I am going to drop a quick save here. This is the diary of my friend who passed away. His diary. Yes, and he wrote in it last night before he died. Something a little unusual. It reads, 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. And then a few minutes later, 1.35 a.m. It looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? I don't understand. It's strange, isn't it? But the ventilator he mentions joins to this cabin, you see. It's up there on the wall. In other words, this cabin and the victim's cabin are connected together. Oh! Miss Pavlova? Has something occurred to you? Does the speckled band the thick dimension mean anything mean something to you? Or the whistling sound perhaps? No. I don't know anything. Oh. Dun dun dun. Excuse me, Mr. Roylock. Yes, what? Wow, she's fast. <laughs> she's in show business. She knows how to change quickly. Captain would like to speak with you. You must come to Captain's quarters at once, please. All right, I will come now.
What? We must leave. No. Oh no, it's fine. Don't mind us. <laughs> yes, please. Don't worry yourself, Mr. Roylot. Get out. The passenger said out, or do you want me to throw you out? It looks like we'll have to leave investigating this cabin until later. What a pity. And so we lost our chance. Having still not managed to investigate Miss Pavlova's cabin, we were unceremoniously chased out. Thank you for the compliment, Mossborn, and the hydrate. That is to say, we were quite literally picked up and thrown into the passageway outside. I would have walked, honestly. I feel like it's fully possible. I feel like you could have managed it if you had tried a little bit harder, Ryu. Saving current progress. So now can we have the cheese? I wish we hadn't been thrown out like that. I wish we'd find, managed to find some clue as to what that speckled band might be. Didn't manage to investigate at all. And I imagine that we won't be able to for a while longer. We'll never get past that sailor guarding the door. I just barely realized that that shirt is not big enough and his belly button is showing. I hadn't noticed that before. <laughs> I think I was a little bit too concerned with the stripes across his face. He's clearly glaring at us as if to say, don't even think about it. Oh, wait a minute. What is it? Well, what happened to our great detective friend? Where did he go? Oh, yes, he completely disappeared. When did he do that? He slipped away quiet, as quietly as the wind, but not before ensuring their, these were securely back on my wrists. I wonder. It's locked. I can't open it. <laughs> no one wants to let the murderer escape. Gosh, she gave me a very stern look when she said that. So I can't get into Miss Pavlova's cavern. Cabin. We can go back to our room, though. First class cabin number one. They're still investigating in here. Yes, on that subject, I wonder if Inspector Hosunaga is unscathed. What do you mean, unscathed? Surely you haven't forgotten, have you, Narahoda-san? Don't you remember what he said about allowing you out of this cabin to investigate? He was going to talk to the captain about it. He said he'd lay his life on the line for you. Oh, yes. But I'm sure he was exaggerating. Let's see what he has to say for himself. Might have some new information for us. You never know. Oh, there he is. I was like, where? So is that her Russian to English to Japanese dictionary?
You can't relax when things are untidy. Have you seen this room? Yo, where did you go? Oh, sorry, I just went to the next door cabin. Why? Who gave you permission for this? Um, well, I mean, Seaman Hosunaga did. Hmm, a new Japanese, was it? Later, I will roll him into ball and throw him in cold. <laughs> Hope Inspector Hosunaga doesn't find himself in too much trouble on our account. When we get back to Japan, we'll have to take him for a steak at La Carnival. That could be a very long time from now, Naruhoda-san. <laughs> so it's clear that these letters were written with ink that was somehow spilt on the floor. And they spell the Russian word for wardrobe. It does seem to be an unambiguous pointer to you, Naruhoda-san, as you were sleeping in there. But to be truly unambiguous, it should have just spelt out my name, don't you think? Well, either way, one fact remains. It's hard to imagine that Kazuma-sama would have written his last words, or word, in Russian. Which begs the question of who did write it. I imagine that the reason he wrote that was simply because the whistling sound woke him up. Almost impossible to believe that he's gone. Truthfully, it makes very little sense that I was sleeping in the wardrobe. You'd think that at night, when the door is always going to be bolted, is the natural time to let me out. as baffled as we are. I wonder if she's telling us everything. <sighs> there was something about... For a second there I thought that it said there was always something about that woman that didn't sit right with me and I was like, you have known her for ten minutes and five of those she was wearing a beard. Uh, I think he's... yeah, he's taken a bit of a beating. Ah, oh, you're back. Inspector! What happened to you? Your face is... Please, don't worry about it. They're just scratches. Made by a bear, maybe? When I told the captain that I'd given you permission to investigate, he told me he'd pummel me with his fists and then toss me overboard. What? But the pummeling was over in a flash, and he must have decided against throwing me overboard. So it was nothing, really. Looks like he wasn't joking when he said he'd lay his life on the line if he had to. Well, thanks to your efforts, we now know a little about the neighbor's cabin. Yes, so I understand. Oh. I bumped into a man claiming to be a great detective a little while ago. I think his name was something like Herlock Jones. I don't think he was German, though. Ah, that explains it. I mean, when would he have had the opportunity to do so? Shall we compare notes, then? We can tell you what we've found out. 
Yes, let's do it. What? Nikolina Pavlova? She's in the cabin next door? Oh, do you know who she is? Please, what self-respecting ballet fan wouldn't know that graceful angel? <coughs> I think I upset him there. Well, that tells us the neighboring cabin is unrelated to the case, at least. Oh, how? Because angels don't go around committing crimes. <laughs> she is here because she has maybe committed a crime? I'm really not sure at this point. She claims that the tiara was a gift from... Uh... Someone in Prussia, I think she said. <laughs> Which would make it not stealing. So she's only running away, and I don't really think that is a crime. Now I've definitely upset him. Inspector, has your investigation in here proved fruitful? If I'm honest, there's very little more I can do. Our duty is to make sure the scene isn't disturbed, ready to hand over to the Hong Kong police. So I'm just keeping watch here, trying not to take my eyes off the job. Oh, I see. There is one thing. I do have a small piece of new information for you. <laughs> oh, what? Yes, tell us, Inspector, please. What is this new information you have, Inspector? It's this. The Barry's medical officer has finished his examination of the body. I managed to obtain the report. Oh, Cosima's post-mortem report? Cosima-sama. So, what was the cause of death? Damage to the cervical vertebrae is what's written in the report. His neck was broken? Yes, it would seem so. There were no obvious wounds or other signs of injury. So at first, I think they were considering poison. But it turns out they found no trace of poison in his system at all. Well, what weapon was used then? Bare hands. Nothing has been found as yet, but the fact that there are no signs of a wound suggests it may have been a blunt object, something that wouldn't leave him. His neck was broken. Like, the obvious thing is just 12 pounds of force. <laughs> or, no, it's 12 pounds of pressure to suffocate someone. I can't remember how much it is to break a neck. It's far less than you would think, though. Don't ever mess around with a neck-breaking motion because it is relatively possible to accomplish by accident. Oh, I see. All the body's nerves run through the spine to the brain. A strong enough impact to the neck could induce death. It's a possibility, and no obvious wound would be left. I'm pretty sure some obvious wounds would be left. Among other things, there would be bruising on the neck if it was from a blow. Poor Cosma. I have a second copy of the report. If it might be useful, you're welcome to have it. Really? Are you sure? Yes, it's fine. I trust you. After all, if I didn't trust you, I'd never have agreed to you leaving this cabin in the first place, would I? You know, he's managed to not steal anything from this crime scene as far as I can tell, so he's alright for this case so far. Ah. Post-mortem report has been entered into the court record. No traces of external injury or poison. Oh, 
Oh, Mr. Sholmes was here, was he? Yes, he seemed to be enjoying himself a little too much as he crept about on the floor investigating. But then he suddenly left. I suppose he must have become bored. Did he say anything at all? Actually, now you mention it, yes. There's one thing, but he practically shouted it. It's shoe polish, was all he said. Oh. Oh, that smear on the floor must be shoe polish. I think we can be confident that the bottle of ink is in fact ink, but the smear on the floor there is probably shoe polish. It was when he was over there by the piece of broken glass, do you see? Yeah. Perhaps he was talking about this brick-colored mark, do you think? Ah, yes, that must be it. But how could Mr. Sholmes know that it's shoe polish? That leaves me cold, I'm afraid. I have no idea. What is it, Suzato-san? Well, Kazuma-sama was wearing leather shoes with a very dark tan hue. Dark tan. Sort of dark brownish red, then. Yes, a little like the color of red wine, but darker. I often repaired them for him. Oh, does this mean that this mark was made by the polish on Kazuma's shoes as they scuffed the floor? Is the end result just going to be that he fell? Like, that doesn't make any sense, because if that was the case, then there would be nothing written on the floor. Someone had to have killed him, otherwise there would be no reason to cover it up. really all I can tell you at this stage. I should return to my post. My fellow crewman's eyes are boring into the back of my head. That might be for the best. Thank you. Poor inspector. You look exhausted. No, he always looks like that. Oh, no. Well... I feel terrible that I failed to protect Asogi son. He was my responsibility. Of course, my pain is nothing compared to yours. You are his friends. The truth is, I never liked the guy. He seemed to have had a heavy head ever since I woke this morning. A heavy head? That's interesting. My head's still throbbing, too. Oh, so the attempt. Okay, so this is further cementing it. Kazuma's food was definitely drugged, but he gave it to us, so he was fully awake and aware. <clears throat> However, Inspector Hosanaga's food was also drugged, which is why he didn't notice anything going on, even though he was probably nearby and intending to be on the lookout. Which means... This was an assassination. It was an assassination. They drugged him while they were attempting to sneak their way in here. Well, they drugged him so they could attempt to sneak in here. And then... I wonder if she was drugged, too. I mean, that could allow for someone to sneak in through the vents. Maybe. I mean, it's a pretty small vent, but a small person could conceivably fit through. And if they thought that the person inside was going to be drugged, they wouldn't have much to worry about as far as being heard. But like, 100%, Kazuma's food and Inspector Hosanaga were drugged. Which is why Ryu has been feeling off, and so has he. 
It's like, this is definitely an assassination. Gosh, I didn't mean to click on that. Step out into the hall, it seems like the only thing we can do. Look, Naruhoto-san. Seaman Stroganov is gone. Strong enough? The burly Russian sailor who's always crossing his arms and glaring at us. All these Russian names are impossible. For no, his is pretty easy. It's Beef Stroganov. Tra-la-la. Oh, hi, detective. Sounded like someone singing. I did it the great detective way. Yeah, I figured. I know that lark-like voice. Never mind that now. This is a golden opportunity for us. Let's go and look in that cabin. <laughs> Before that stringy knot crewman comes back. Stroganov, not stringy knot. Time to meet her cat. Miss Pavlova isn't back yet. Susato-san. Oh, where's she gone? Hey, what are you doing? Those are her private things. Not a moment to waste, Naruhoto-san. We must investigate as quickly as we can. Suppose you're right, for Kazuma's sake. Not just for Kazuma-sama. What do you mean? It can't be long now until we arrive at a port in Hong Kong. I don't want you to be in those handcuffs when we get there. Really? We must solve this case, Naruhoto-san, by ourselves if we have to. Yes, we will. have toppled over together. Perhaps... Perhaps Miss Pavlova was practicing... Again, we're at sea. There are these things called waves. They are from Japan. You should know them. must have been you. You lost your temper and knocked them all over in a fit of rage. Not everything bad that happens on this ship is because of me, you know. In fact, so far, nothing bad that has happened on this ship has happened because of me. As far as I can tell. Anyway, I'll set them all straight again in here, too. Ah, yes. Hmm. <sighs> Well, at least this isn't tampering with a crime scene. TR is gone. They're all in Russian. Thanks. 
think I probably already knew that. Teapot is empty. Definitely that they're excessively thirsty. I'd lay a thousand to one on it. You're rather obstinate, aren't you, Narahoto san? Trash can. Somehow I have a feeling that's where her cat is hiding currently. Let's look at the wardrobe. I'm right here, yes, why? Oh, good. I thought you might have climbed into the wardrobe when I wasn't looking. Just didn't... Really? Really? I don't have some strange compulsion to jump inside every wardrobe I see, you know. Anyway, I'm not sure anyone could fit inside this one. It's full of beautiful outfits. I suppose they're all stage costumes. I was rather hoping we might find Miss Pavlova's friend hiding in there, but no such luck. There's her bell pole. To. We're trying to investigate in secret. Alright, let's look at the box that is now empty. so that if there's a gas leak next door, the occupant of this cabin would notice and rip. Or the occupant. Yeah, I think Susan is right this time around. get closer to the actual solution. I'm pretty sure her pet is in the is in the trash can, but oh, I almost forgot to look at the door. know a lot of tricks for opening doors. I'm starting to see why they suspect me. Okay, next thing we're going to look at the bowl. You think there could be a leak in the roof just above here? Is this ship quite safe? Sure that even if there's a little leak in the roof, it doesn't mean the whole ship is going to sink. All right, last clue. Oh, wait, except for this.
Oh, the other option is that it snuck into our cabin through the vent. Really? That's where she's drawing the line. We're already invading her room and you already rifled through her closet. There's nothing. thought that we would find a cat in here. Suppose... No, we've already looked at that. I think we've already looked at everything in here. means there's really only one more option. I suppose I'll click on these just to have them checked off. Thing is, we haven't learned anything by looking around in there. That's what I needed to find. Hi, Mr. Sholmes. I wonder if I was supposed to take him in there with us when we went to investigate. Also, why does he have a gun? Mr. Sholmes. What is he? You want to fight? Hm? As he does a whole little dance. <laughs> One sec, I'm going to turn the fan back on. because the uh, cold air was messing with my throat, but now I want it back on. Mankind is fickle, you see. Honestly, interrupting a fellow when he's singing. I was just about to reach the climactic finish. Sorry, I thought you were never going to stop, so I figured now's as good a time as ever. I very nearly dropped you to the floor with one of my famous right hooks. 
Alright, I got the picture. Now, could you put those fists away? <sighs> Mr. Sholmes, you seem to be examining something before we interrupted you. Ah, yes, that. I was immersed in the study of the ship's log as penned by the stockily built gentleman who's usually on guard here. Oh yes, the ship's log. And did you find out anything useful from it? Well, after 2 a.m. this morning, the majority of the entries are blank. Which means that there was nothing to report, nothing of note happened, so... No, it means no one was here to fill them in. I bet they're supposed to write something, like, nothing to report, if there is nothing to report. You truly are a student from the land of the rising sun. You've been utterly blinded by it. Sorry? Your logic, my boy, is inverted. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? Observe the other pages, and all shall become clear. It would seem the same crewman off stands sentry in this first class passageway. And he has almost a he has an almost religious practice of recording nothing to report every half hour. Oh, he writes that in every 30 minutes? Nothing to report. Precisely, put simply, the seaman writes nothing to report when there is just that. And yet, the ship's log from last night is largely blank. He didn't even write nothing to report. Do you mean... Yes, there were circumstances afoot last night which led to the seaman being absent from his post. What kind of circumstances? What happened? That remains a mystery for now, but we can be sure something significant took place. So significant that it caused the seaman to forget his regular habit of scribing nothing to report in the log. These are important details. I would stake my life on it. You must log the ship's log in your mental file. There we go. Now it's in the court record. Now that deduction was worthy of a great detective. Yeah, I'll give him credit where it's due. That was a good deduction. A good catch. Oh, ouch. What is it? Are you hurt? Oh, don't worry yourself. I seem to be afflicted with a throbbing... Okay. Was he also drugged? Because if so, now it's starting to seem like it was something gaseous. That everyone was drugged. Well, my friends, until our next encounter. He's still singing to himself. I can hear it as he wanders off down the passageway. Something wrong, Suzato san. You seem lost in thought. It's just, well, I feel the same. Sorry? Ever since I woke this morning, I've had something of a headache. Sort of continuous throbbing. Oh, you too? Okay, now this is getting weird. If it was just the first class cabins, I could see that, but... Now it's sounding like the whole ship was gas. Ooh. Oh, what's that?
her cat flipped the alarm. Shut down the engines immediately. Vessel sighted a quarter mile four. Full stop. Hard to starboard. All hands brace for impact. Pirates? The. I think we're about to crash into another ship. What? I can't stand. Suzato san, hold on to me. What? Suzato san, are you alright? Are you injured at all? I think I'm fine. Thank you, Naruhoto san. <laughs> and the books are all tipped over. Okay, so that's going to be the explanation. We made a sharp turn at some point last night. And that's what tipped the books over. I think... Yes, the ship has come to a stop. Oh my goodness, what about you, naruto -san? Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Oh, take a look at that lock, people. A sharp turn can cause the lock to slide into place. Hello, is anybody in there? Shout if you need assistance. That sounds like... Inspector Hosanaga. Is that you in there, naruhoto san Unbolt the door, quickly. What? The bolt? Look at that. The door's bolted. Did you do that, susato san No, I didn't touch it. Well, that's strange. How did... And look at all the books. They're just like they were before again. Arahoto-san, aren't you going to open up the door and let the inspector in? Uh, not quite yet. First I want to look around. Wait, no! I, I wanted to look around at that! A violent emergency stop has solved one mystery, at least, in a very vivid way. But I knew that what awaited us on the other side of the cabin door would not be pleasant. Hurried around tidying up a new, the cabin with a new sense of foreboding in my heart. Drop a quick save here. Ninth January, S January, SS Beria, Miss Pavlova's cabin. Somehow, the door to the cabin we were in ended up bolted after we made an emergency stop. Suzato-san took a deep breath and gently slid back the bolt. Yo, what are you doing in Miss Pavlova's quarters? Ah, you both look unhurt. Good. Yes, we're fine. Thank you. What on earth happened? We heard something about how we were going to collide with another ship. Yes, it appears to have been a false report, though. Oh, how did that happen? There's a dense fog outside, so it's extremely difficult to see. Someone must have thought he saw a ship ahead. This person obviously triggered the alarm, and that's why we made an emergency stop. Everything is chaos. Passengers are screaming. Crew are running everywhere. Cats and dogs have appeared out of the lower decks. We do not know if they are pets or they were being eaten. Well, later, Brittle Lizard. Thanks for being here while you could. This first class area is the only quiet part of the ship at the moment. Oh, I see. Someone triggered the alarm. Does that mean someone pressed that button outside? Ah! You, you wicked intruder! Dressed all in black, you are the devil! 
sorry? Me? I've been called a lot of things before, but devil is a first. You opened my traveling case. How could you? What? No, we didn't touch it. That's right, Miss Pavlova. It was already open when we came into your cabin. Inspector. Um, yes? Arrest this man. I know he did it. He is a criminal. Is that not... Is it not enough that he has killed a man? Ah, and he has stole away as well. If Vixen promises not to steal chicken, do you believe? <sighs> Take him away. Take him away. He is a trespasser as well as everything else. Stowing away. Trespassing. Killing. She is right. You are the devil. Okay, first of all, only two of those are true. Doesn't look good, does it? Here is cell below deck. Throw him in. Tomorrow we dock in Hong Kong. Then we give you straight to police. Wait, a cell? Please, Inspector Hosanaga, is there nothing you can do? It's a Russian vessel. I have no jurisdiction here. After my last effort to appeal to the captain's good nature, I think I'm all out of options. This is terrible. This is a real crisis. I've got to find a solution. Immediately. Get out. So are they going to stop me looking at things? Really? Oh. Okay then. What are you doing up there? Mr. Sholmes? Naturally, I was analyzing what a weight of 20,000 rubles feels like on one's head. Have I not told you that as a detective, it is my business to know what other people do not? This isn't mere tomfoolery, my boy. Oh, no, no, no. Well, why were you hanging from that hook before then? That was mere tomfoolery. Isn't it obvious? To properly assess the weight of 20,000 rubles, naturally. I wish to determine if it would bend that conceited looking hook on the wall, so full of brag and bounce. Ah, you again, the great detective. Ah, Inspector, I've, I confess I've been looking for you. I have something to report to you most urgently. Well, you might try looking for me somewhere other than a hook on the wall next time. What is the report? Speak! An urgent report from a great detective can mean but one thing. Yes. The case of the curious murder that took place last night here on this vessel, vessel the steamship area, has been solved by me, naturally. What? Why is she looking shocked? Really? Yes, I have eliminated all of the possibilities. No other explanation exists. So, allow me to illuminate all your minds. For I am about to reveal my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. Oh no. We're going to have to correct so much of this. Ah, you have solved it. Even Edgehog understands this case. 
Pion Lu was responsible for killing student boy this morning when we found criminal in wardrobe. It is this stowaway, and he has handcuffs to prove it. I didn't do it. The trouble is, there doesn't appear to be anyone else who could have killed the victim. Because, as everyone knows, the cabin door was bolted shut from the inside. That means the culprit must be someone who was inside the cabin. But the wardrobe that I was in had a note pasted onto it from the outside, which means it couldn't have been the person in the wardrobe. Bah, locked room. That's his point. Room was locked. I can't deny that. There's no way the bolt could have been drawn across from outside the cabin. You are all quite mistaken. The cabin next door is not a so-called locked room at all. What? Oh yes, there is another entrance. An entrance used last night by the culprit in order to gain access to the cabin, despite the bolted door. What other entrance? We never discovered one. Why, it gapes open-mouthed at you even as we speak. The ventilator, man. The ventilator? Yeah, he is about to accuse Nicolina of murder. Oh, cool. We do have some of these people here. Nicolina Pavlova. Grimsby Roylot, a fake person. Beef Stroganov. Satoru Hosunaga. Herlock Sholmes. Susan, Suzato Mik Mikotoba. And Kazuma Asogi. He really doesn't look 34. I'm going to be honest, he looks 24. Yeah, uh, 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 you think this funny? I cannot even put my arm through that hole. That's because your arms are as thick as tree trunks. You're suggesting that the culprit entered and left the victim's cabin through that tiny opening. It's not possible. Ah, but it is. And last night, the victim even witnessed the intruder in the act of passing through the ventilator. Mr. Sholmes, do you mean... Are you referring to the words Kazuma-sama wrote in his diary? On 23 a.m., I can hear a faint whistling sound. On 35 a.m., it looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Precisely, my dear madam. What does it mean? What is this speckled band? The answer to that particular conundrum is in this very cabin. Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? Why are you dancing? Like, I'm, I'm Canadian. It's, I love the chance to dance, but this doesn't seem the time and place. I have no idea if Canadians love the chance to dance. I assume they do. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that Canadians love to dance. I'm also going to radically lump them all together and assume that all Canadians share the trait of loving to dance, because that seems like a great plan here. There is a distinct element of danger, but fear not, I am ready. What I am about to expose for you all to see will shock you to your cores. Behold! Yeah! Ah! What? What the? So hang on. Okay, so it doesn't say whose that is. Stroganov. Allow me to introduce you all to the band, the Speckled Band. It's not speckled, it's striped. A snake? Indubitably. <sighs> the 
So is the claim that the snake constricted him to death? Mr. Sholmes, just one more thing. Pray, what troubles you? Well, that snake... isn't really speckled, is it? It looks more stripy, wouldn't you say? Hmm? Yes, you're right. I think in this case you'd have to call it... the Striped Band, wouldn't you? <laughs> you both see and observe with distinction. However, do you not think that is precisely the trap into which the culprit wishes you to fall? Like, no. How? I think perhaps it is time I explain the intricacies of my train of thought. Are you ready, Miss Pavlova? I'm sorry for the young man who died, but that is all. His death is nothing to do with me. This whole thing is nothing to do with me. There are two conclusions I have drawn from the facts. Number one, last night your friend infiltrated the victim's cabin. Ah. And number two, that same friend was responsible for the victim losing his life. No. She's turned as white as a bowl of rice again. Yet she is going to be arrested and charged with the murder and we are going to have to prove that it was not her. Sholmes must be right. He's hit the nail on the head. I mean, he's right about what she thinks happened. He's not right about what happened, but he's definitely right about what she thinks happened. This young woman's friend killed Mr. Osogi? It's like he can't speak with that snake coiled around his head. I would advise as little movement as possible, Seaman. You wouldn't want the fangs of that long friend in your neck. So everyone, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Yeah, there are a lot of holes in this theory. <sighs> Intruder's identity. Moments ago, you claimed the following. His death is nothing to do with me. This whole thing is nothing to do with me. Yet you cannot deceive yourself. Yes, when you recall those horrid events, your aching heart smarts with pain. And it is that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. So, we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on that portentous night? Why, naturally, it was the friend which you boarded this vessel, was it not? Ah, as I suspected, another telltale glance. Without doubt, your friend is the writhing serpent we see before us. And yet, that fact leaves us in a quandary. The victim's written observations on the night in question tell of a speckled bat. Whereas, regrettably, this specimen's markings do not fit that description in any way. What explanation can we then give, pray? What was this sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? No, don't look at me. This has nothing to do with any of this. Well, but if it does, you have the answer, the answer to this quandary even now, hidden behind your back. Yes, that which you are trying, but failing, to conceal, conceal can only be the snake's slowed skin. Evidently, after the subtle and horrible crime, this most deadly friend of yours shed its original skin. 
No? That is not how snakes work. I don't know what you're talking about. Last night, through the ventilator visible in this cabin, your then-speckled friend slithered next door. Using the bell cord on the other side of the bridge, the serpent silently descended into the victim's quarters. In that dim light, it appeared to the young gentleman who was about to lose his life as a speckled band. In summary, the nature of this friend of yours, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, is a rare breed of snake whose markings change each time it sloughs its skin. A snake so dreadful, we can only imagine it would be found in the deepest depths of India. <sighs> He's about to claim that this thing poison that this thing bit him. Moving on, we come to the heart of the matter, the grim demise of the victim. How did this young man lose his life and why? According to the data of which I have been apprised, it would appear there are no visible signs of injury. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by a terrible venom. No, that is incorrect. Now, if we take that as fact, we can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm it at the scene of the crime. Did we move runes during this? Oh no, could that be... Yes, an examination of the deceased's body will prove the cause of death conclusively. The almost, not quite, imperceptible puncture wounds left by the venomous fangs will seal the truth. Yes, the vestiges of the snake bite delivered by your terrifying friend. This... This makes no sense. There's no point feigning ignorance, Miss Pavlova. After the incident, you endeavored to hide everything, didn't you? But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. That's right. You hide the evidence that links you to the victim's death in that traveling case. When we first met in this cabin, it came to my attention that your case moved periodically. Your serpent assassin was restless inside, no doubt. You... you don't... It is telling that the victim made a note of a low whistling sound that he heard minutes before his end. That was your signal, was it not? The sound you had used to train your serpent friend. To train? Indeed, you'd put the serpent through this ventilator and wait. After a period, you'd summon it back with a whistle. You couldn't know if the animal had done its duty, so you would listen for signs of life next door. If the victim appeared not to have been dispatched, you'd release the snake once more. Do you deny the snake has undergone such training? It's not true. Having slithered through the ventilator and down the bell cord, the creature needed only to sink its fangs in once. And its venom would course through the victim's veins, ending his existence forever. That is the true nature of the speckled band that took the poor young man's life. There can be no doubt my logic is infallible. Logic is heck infallible, I'm telling you right now.
Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of the Speckled Band. I mean, last one, you could just go and, like, get bit by a radioactive snake. I'm pretty sure that would give you snake powers. Miss Pavlova has trained her pet snake as a killing machine. There on the floor, you will observe a saucer of milk. The promise of food is key to training any creature. Incredible. You've solved the mystery. Amazing, your great deduction really lives up to its name. See now why Herlock Sholmes has become such a household name. I'm hoping that Ryu was being sarcastic when he called that incredible. My dear man, it was nothing remarkable. As the Russians say, I could have done it with one left hand. You have one left hand. The fact that you have no right hand that you have one right hand is of no consequence in that statement. Um, could I venture an opinion, Mr. Sholmes? But of course, what's on your mind? It's just about your deductions before. Some things don't quite make sense to me. I welcome questions as to my method, and will answer both loudly and proudly. Oh, well, good. First of all, first of all, <sighs> snakes are egg-laying creatures, part of the reptile family. You are well informed, madam. And reptiles, um, don't drink milk. I mean, they don't produce milk, but that's not actually proof that they can't drink it. I imagine that they could if they set their mind to it. Ah, it's really only mammals that like to drink milk, you see. Again, I kind of imagine that a lot of creatures don't mind milk. So I'm not sure it would be possible to train a snake using milk as a reward. No matter. No doubt Miss Pavlova used some other treat to encourage her pet to do her bidding. Milk was merely an example. The logic holds. Well, there's something else. Snakes have no ears. They have ears. They're small. They're not impressive. But they have ears. Ah. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure it would really be possible to signal a snake by whistling. But madam, what of the tales from Arabia? Oh, that's, that's actually true. Snake charmers don't charm them with sound. They charm them with their movement. Sound is... The music is just kind of part of the show. But I have no idea if they actually are incapable of hearing. Anyway. Have you not heard of the snakes that dance to the sound of a flute? I think perhaps the performers play their music in time with the snake's natural movements. Oh, I see. No hands, no feet, no ears. These creatures are so inept as to be practically useless. Don't take it out on the snakes, Mr. Sholmes. Um, there is one other thing. You have more? Snakes use the scales on their bellies to propel themselves. So, I'm not really sure that a snake could manage to climb up a flat bell cord like the ones in these cabins. I'm not sure on that one. Then it should try hard. Naturally. Please, don't be angry with me, Mr. Sholmes. Point is, even if the snake had gone through the ventilator to the next door cabin, it couldn't have come back without help. What I'm trying to say is that there are a number of reasons why it's difficult to imagine the snake could have had a part in this. Aside from the fact that the snake is not her pet. I think... We need to step in and help again, Mr. Naruhoto. 
Oh no, you don't mean... Yes, we need to modify Sh Mr. Sholm's latest deductions and turn them into the great ones they ought to be. I had a feeling that was coming. Alright, let's give it a try. Just what I was waiting for, Mr. Naruhoto. Yes, right. So, cast your eyes down to your wrists again. You've done it again. Your handcuffs are gone. Where did they go? Fear not, you sh I shall see they're restored after our work is done. I really wish you'd leave them off. Now everyone, let us begin. Herlock Jones is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Okay. <laughs> It's not her heart that hurts, it's her hand. All those horrid events, that claw stretch smarts with pain. Indeed, and simple observation reveals that the wound is fresh. Miss Pavlova, did you in fact receive that scratch sometime last night? Ugh! When I think about the young man who died next door, I feel so sad. And when I am sad, the pain from this wound is worse. And it is that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. It's true. I'm guessing there's a cat under the table, based on the angle that it's pointing us at. Snakes don't have claws. Wait, I should have been reading that. It seems likely that the scratch mark on the back of Miss Pavlova's hand is made by this friend of hers, doesn't it? Except snakes don't have claws, do they? No, they don't. They don't even have hands or feet on which claws might grow. Funny thing. And I know this because my family used to own a constrictor snake, a boa constrictor. They actually had two. One while I was growing up, and then when that one died, we got another. Female snakes have a couple of claws. <sighs> Picture where you would imagine a snake's hips would be. They have a couple of claws fairly far back along their body, which are used to grip during mating. So they do actually have claws. The females, anyway. Some of them. I can't imagine that it's true for all snakes. I'm not going to claim to know everything. But some snakes have a couple of claws. However, they would not be able to produce the marks that are on her hand. Well then. If that snake isn't her pet, what is? It's the true identity of this friend of hers. It's the sailor. We should follow her gaze, Naruhoto-san. That's where we'll find the answer. Ah, uh, there we are. Yes! Oh. Let's not be distracted by the print itself, oh no. Wait, what?
we're, we're going to pick back up. So is the claim that the seaman is her friend? Like, <laughs> I mean the solution is pretty obvious. It's the picture, but I can't select the picture because it only lets me select the photograph frame. to drop a save of our own right before this starts. Like, it's not letting me toggle the camera up and down. Yes! Hang on. I can't find anything else to actually... point to. Like there's the teapot. I mean, this is the only thing left to point to. Yes! I can't point to anything else. Okay, I'm just going to point to the snake, because that's the only thing left to point to. Yes! I can't... I want to zoom in on the...
Oh my gosh, I can just hit A. I mean, I knew it was the cat in the picture, but I didn't know how to zoom in on it. Yes! <sighs> Scratch on the back of your hand. Whereabouts of this black kitten isn't clear. Wait, so it's a black cat, so it couldn't be the speckled band. Baraka is my best friend. I couldn't leave her behind. Hmm, Darka would appear to be a Russian blue. And yet, that fact leaves us in a quandary. The victim's written observations on the night in question tell of a speckled band, whereas regrettably... Maybe it's his collar? This specimen's markings do not fit that description in any way. What explanation can we then give, pray? What was this sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? No, don't look at me. This has nothing to do with any of this. But it does. You have the answer to this quandary even now. Hidden behind your back. Yes, that which you are trying but failing to conceal can only be... Honestly, it's kind of... Yeah. <laughs> if she just left it in her pocket, no one would ever have known. Oh yes, ploys like that are Mrs are Mr. Holmes' specialty. He ever so cleverly forced her to reveal something. I thought deduction was his specialty, or making me believe that was a ploy too. Making me believe that was a ploy too. Anyway, I find it hard to believe that's the skin of a snake. In which case, just what is Miss Pavlova hiding behind her back? Oh my gosh, it's... <gasps> Left ear right here. It's inverted. speckled and it is a band, but what is it? it? Seems to be soft and fluffy, a long piece of cloth. Oh, it's probably like one of those things that you that ballerinas twirl during performances. Oh, it's a cat toy. Okay, that's different. Cats like to chase the band around and paw at it. Kittens in particular love that sort of play. You only need to wave it in front of them and they pounce to catch it. <laughs> that sounds positively adorable. Yes! Yes, the thing you're trying but failing to conceal is a cat's toy. Precisely, in the true nature of the now infamous Speckled Band. And it was with this toy that you it was this toy that you dangled through the ventilator. <laughs> you waved it around, I presume. Naturally, the victim could not fail to notice. But why? For what reason? My dear boy, there can be only one answer to that. After her feline friend disappeared through the ventilator into the neighboring cabin, Miss Pavlova attempted to use the speckled cat's toy to, to incite the creature to return. That actually works. In summary, the nature of this friend of Miss Pavlova's, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, 
is a blithesome Russian bre blue breed of cat by the name of Doc. Ah! A truly troublesome feline young Daka is proving to be. She must be caged once found. You will forgive us for borrowing the photograph of your pet, Miss Pavlova. The tiara she would wear on stage can also be seen. Ooh, hang on. I want to... I want to access the court record. I want to take a look at it. Oh my gosh, we've added several things here. Victim male, Far Eastern, time of death, between 1 and a little past 2 a.m. Cause of death, damage to the cervical vertebrae, resulting in instant death. Victim's neck was almost certainly broken as a result of a strong blow to the area. No obvious external injuries or traces of poison. Mark on the floor. Still not clear what this thing is. But this is likely shoe polish. I'm just wondering, did he just straight up, like, the ship at some point came to an abrupt stop and he fell and broke his neck? Is that where this is going? Nothing to report, nothing to report, nothing to report, and then nothing added for several days after. And it's by Beef Stroganoff. But this is the one that's interesting to... Oh, I thought I'd be able to, like, turn it around and stuff. That is less interesting. Ah, uh, but look at the kitty. It's cute. was after I gave her food last night. That's when it happened. She scratched the back of my hand and then ran up the bell cord. Before I could do anything, she had disappeared through the ventilator. Darker, she is so naughty. A beloved kitten. How he died? Moving on, we come to the heart of the matter, the grim demise of the victim. How did this young man lose his life, and why? According to the data of which I have been apprised, it would appear there were no visible signs of injury. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death... Terrible venom, huh? No signs of a wound anywhere on Cosmo's body. Cosmo wasn't poisoned, but, like... A venomous bite would leave a mark. Especially from a snake that size. But also from any size of snake. I've been bitten by a snake before. I've been bitten by a few of them, to be honest. One time while I was living in Florida, I found this snake by the side of the road. It was just a garter snake. I could tell that from the first look. I was going to see some friends, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to grab this, take it along. Maybe grab a couple of pictures or something. And I did manage it, but it did bite me a couple of times. <laughs> I let it go after I took a couple of pictures. Then when I showed up at my friend's house, I had to... Ask them if I could get a band-aid or two. <laughs> because, yeah. Even with little tiny fangs, they can draw a decent amount of blood. <laughs> and snakes with bigger fangs would definitely leave a bigger mark. Maybe a cleaner mark. Maybe one that doesn't bleed as much, but it would be visible upon close inspection. Let's give him the information he's missing. Can only be explained by the post-mortem report. Ah, yes, I knew it was one or the other. 
His neck was... His neck was... Indeed, the breaking of the cervical vertebrae is fatal. Only that Goliath would be strong enough to survive that. No, even... Even he would not survive the breaking of the cervical vertebrae. He might survive a specific blow that broke it, but he wouldn't survive the breaking thereof. The jury is out. Anyway, we have on good authority that the victim's neck was broken. Now, if we take that as fact... We can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm it was at the scene of the crime. Oh no, could there be... Yes, an examination of the deceased's body will prove the cause of death conclusively. Uh, no. In other words, he was probably struck by something or someone. Yes, that's a distinct possibility. So yet no weapon has been found, though. Presumably <laughs> Darka didn't silently creep up behind Kazuma and deal him a fatal blow. <coughs> I suppose it's possible that he had a fall and hit the ground awkwardly. It could have been a terrible act of misfortune that he broke his neck completely by accident. Oh yes, a bad fall could explain it. It's rather hard to believe Ka of Kazuma-sama, though. He wasn't a clumsy man. Well, we need to fix this deduction somehow. What could explain what happened? I think it's going to be the mark on the floor, but I am going to drop the save before I answer that. Yes! Ah, yes. An examination of the mark on the floor will prove the cause of death conclusively. This particular mark, so prominently visible next to the victim's body, is a deposit of shoe polish. Shoe, pol shoe polish? Indeed, positively identified by a little analysis device I constructed, which I now carry as a matter of course. Beeswax, tallow, and dye were my results, the undeniable ingredients of shoe polish. And the color of the polish is a perfect match to the color of Mr. Asogi's lace leather shoes. Looking at this mark, it's not hard to imagine what happened. For some reason, Mr. Asogi must have caught his foot at that point on the floor and tripped. Please, no. And, by a dreadful turn of misfortune, caught his neck against some immovable object as he fell to the floor. Suffering a fatal blow to the spine, the victim's vertebrae were shattered, and in that instant he lost his life. No. Yeah, that's absurd. How would the writing get on the floor then? I don't know anything about this. Is that really true, Miss Pavlova? What about the evidence left at the scene where Mr. Osogi lost his life? Yes, the facts are as clear as day to me. You did all you could to conceal this in the incriminating evidence. But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. Not the traveling case. The trash can is going to be the trash can. Now he's no more? It can't be true. I refuse to accept it. Well, it's hard to believe, but the mark on the floor does seem to suggest that's what happened. But, and if this part of Mr. Sholm's deduction is right, Miss Pavlova is trying to hide some evidence that would prove it. Here in this cabin, somewhere in the direction that she just cast her eyes. Where, I wonder? Let's have a good look around. So, can I zoom in on the traveling case? It's empty. That's what I thought. Expect it's wrapped its itself around someone's head somewhere trying to make a new friend? Either that or it's scratching their hand to pieces. Oh, 
waste paper basket. <sighs> oh no. It's a broken piece of glass. I feel like I've seen it somewhere before. If it looks familiar, perhaps it's more than your mind simply playing tricks on you. Right, you hid the evidence that links you to the victim's death in that waste paper basket. Ah. Here we have a fragment of some intricate glass object, it would seem. One that has a familiar air, in fact. Precisely, we found another piece of broken glass on the floor in Mr. Asogi's cabin. She definitely went next door to get Darka back. I completely support that conclusion, but I don't think they've got the right solution. However, it's going to be difficult to prove her innocence. <laughs> As you can see, the two pieces fit together perfectly. Oh no. So Miss Pavlova, shall we consider what this tells us? Why would it be that part of this glass object, which was evidently broken at the scene of the victim's death, should be found in the waste paper basket in your cabin? Yeah. You're well acquainted with this glass bell, are you not? It was attached to the end of the little tassel that she used to play with her kitty. I don't know, and that hushed Russian accent of yours won't save you this time, dear girl. Why? Because we have conclusive evidence linking you to the bell in question. What? Take it away, Mr. Naruhodo. Yes. The evidence linking Miss Pavlova and the little glass bell. Oh wait, it's from her kitten's collar! Yes. Look at this photograph. Every time I do it makes me laugh. Hang from the dark hang from Dark's collar. The very glass bell in question. The truth has caught up with you, Miss Pavlova. The young man who lost his life did so after a truly inauspicious fall. And the cause of that fateful stumble? Your absent feline friend, Darka. I couldn't... I couldn't tell anyone. I'm sorry. Death by tripping over a cat. Oh great, we're gonna have to disprove that when they try her or her cat with murder. Why don't you tell us now, Miss Pavlova? Tell us exactly what happened last night. It was a little after one in the morning. It was so late, but I hadn't had time to feed Darka, so I gave her some food. And then, all of a sudden, she scratched me and jumped out of my hands. People do say that cats become very anxious and nervous in new environments. She was so fast, she disappeared through the ventilator before I could stop her. And that is how you acquired that rather nasty wound on the back of your hand, I take it. Yes. And I had read the, um, 
rules on the wall. I knew that I was not allowed Darka with me. Yes, modern science suggests that animals can carry infectious diseases. It's a precaution, really. So I listened and listened, trying to hear if there was some noise in the next cabin. It was very quiet. I was sure if someone was there, he must be sleeping. So at that point, you thought it safe to lure the kitten back again by dangling the end of the toy through the ventilator and into the adjoining cabin. Doc always loves this toy, but it didn't work. Nothing worked. I tried using her favorite toy. I tried whistling to her softly, but nothing. She didn't return. That was the faint whistling sound. She was trying to retrieve her pet. Cats have a propensity to remain hidden in the shadows when frightened. Yes, so there was nothing else I could do. I just had to wait until she had calmed down. But then... I... I nearly passed out with shock. I heard her cry out and then... Oh, it was such a dreadful bang. Then afterwards, nothing. It was totally silent. Kazuma was... <sighs> From the appearance of the brown mark on the floor, it seems likely that what you heard was the victim stepping on the glass bell and tripping up. The SS Beria is a large vessel, but even she can pitch and roll violently without warning. If Mr. Asogi was already off balance as a result of the ship lurching when the kitten got under his feet, the combination of unfortunate factors could have easily caused him to fall over. <coughs> but what became of the kitten afterwards? In the end... I managed to get her to come back through the ventilator. Yet Darka is nowhere to be seen. Okay, now we've got the contradiction that is going to open up the whole thing. Because if Darka came back through the ventilator on her own, who wrote message? There is no way, literally no way, that Darka, that that could have happened if this is how he died. This was murder. I must have forgotten to lock my case and now she's disappeared again. Gracious, that cat is as insufferably restless as I am. Well, he knows something about himself, at least. When I woke this morning, I heard that a young man in the cabin next to mine had died, but I couldn't bring myself to tell anyone what had happened. I was too scared. I was too scared. Scared. Scared they would send me back. Oh, hold on a minute. What about the snake? You're right, where is it? If the snake isn't your friend, Miss Pavlova, then whose is it and where did it come from? What on earth is such a dangerous creature doing on board this ship? It's his pet. It explains the marks on his face. Oh, I didn't see. Snake is my friend. His name is Pirosk. Pirosko. What? What? That snake belongs to you? He escaped from cage when the emergency alarm sounded. I was looking for him. He is good boy. He is good noodle. I poop his snoot. I did not expect to find him in here. 
How did that snake get into this cabin? But animals are not permitted on board. Ah, we are at sea for one year. You want to be so long without close friends? Without someone who understands? Couldn't you find someone a little more human? Nah. Humans are the worst. Just look at who's in front of you. But my dear burly fellow, a gargantuan venomous snake, surely you can appreciate the danger you're putting everyone in. I mean, I've seen no evidence that the snake is venomous. It doesn't even seem to have fangs. No fit. Hmm? Pyrrhusk does not have venom. He is harmless, very long, but very gentle. He is adorable, like Granny. He also smells, like Granny. It's venomless? Ah. Now he is hungry, so he is in bad mood. But once I feed him, you will see big smile. And... And you feed him what? Milk, I suppose? Ah! Like they say, milk chickens? Like they say they milk chickens? Ridiculous. Snakes that drink milk are only in stupid stories. Pirosko eats mouses. Big, fat, round mouses. He catch them himself. He also helped keep the cat population in the lower decks under control. Truly, everyone brings pets on board. There is not an inch of this ship that is not regularly patrolled by someone's pets. Ah, so, oh, so is that what the mouse trap in the passageway out there is for? Of course. How else can I catch my friend's favorite food? Nothing says top of the food chain like the look in their eyes right now. I love Pirosco though. He's such a good little noodle. Look at that expression. There's not a thought behind those eyes at all. It refuses to drink milk. It can't hear a whistle. It can't climb up a bell cord and it's not even venomous. How the deuce? Did something so inept land a starring role? It's not my fault. I do not make up stories. My Pirosko has nothing to do with this incident. That's not what happened, though. Miss Pavlova? I understand the difficult situation you found yourself in, and I do sympathize, but please remember this. A young man lost his life. If you are going to attempt to cover up your guilt with lies, then... No matter what the circumstances, I cannot forgive you. What? What are you talking about, Miss Mikoto Mikotoba? What lies? Miss Pavlova just confessed everything. It was just a series of unfortunate events. An accident. It can't have been an accident. There was a message written on the floor. And also, everyone was drugged. I'm no great detective like Mr. Sholmes. I don't have a gift for knowing the truth. But even I can see... That was not the truth. Don't you agree, Mr. Naruhoto? To be perfectly honest, yes. There's a discrepancy in Miss Pavlova's story, I'm sure of it. I just. I've been talking about it this entire time, but like. I'm dropping a save. I am also trying to wrap up, but this is kind of a long portion, and there's no good place to stop. I confess, I was intending to let Scotland Yard deal with any outstanding issues on this matter. Oh. 
I am only present here for a very specific reason. <clears throat> the truth is you, Mr. Naruhodo, are simply a distraction. Distraction? I do hope you've not been finding your shackles too uncomfortable. Especially as they're on your wrists as a result of my intervention. I was rather hoping I could resolve matters before we made our next port call. You were, Mr. Sholmes? Yes, but I overlooked one important detail. The deceased young man was a very close companion of yours. Was he not? Yes. Kazuma was my closest friend. I owed him my freedom, even. In that case, we must follow this to its conclusion. No further distractions. You must uncover the real truth here, Mr. Naruhodo. Yes, whatever that may be. The key to this m is the discrepancy in Miss Pavlova's story, I'm sure. If I can chase that down, maybe the truth will become clear. The truth about how you really died. And how the scene in your cabin came to be. Alright, I'll see what I can do. Excellent! Thank you, Mr. Naruhodo. So then, shall we begin? Yes. What we should ponder first... ...is the victim who lost his life in the cabin that was bolted shut from the inside. Was this truly an unfortunate accident, or was it in fact no accident at all? That is what we must establish in the first instance. But we've already established it, haven't we? The man tripped over the kitten that had climbed into his cabin via the ventilator. Tragic, yes, but still an accident. <clears throat> Wait, let's just take a step back. It doesn't make sense if that's really what happened, does it? I'm going to have to ask you to spell it out for me, I'm afraid. I've taken several knocks to the head from the captain, and frankly, my brain is already a bit fuzzy from the fact that everyone on the ship was drugged last night somehow. There's a clear contradiction between the facts and Miss Pavlova's story here. This death couldn't possibly have been a mere accident. Really? Let's show our hand, Mr. Naruhodo. Time to present the evidence. The evidence that proves unequivocally that the victim's death was no mere accident. Yes. The truth is clearly recorded in this photograph. There's no way that Mr. Asogi could have left this message on the floor. That script, it's Russian, isn't it? Indeed it is. The word written means wardrobe. I see what you mean. Most people would leave a dying message in their native language. Japanese, in this case. But, but maybe he was studying Russian. It is simple language. He could have picked it up very fast. That doesn't seem likely. It's actually not the point. It makes no difference whether he knew Russian or not. Sorry, what do you mean? Exactly what I said before. There's no way that Mr. Osogi could have left this message on the floor. And the reason why is clearly explained in here. Damage to the cervical vertebrae resulting in instant death. Instant death. Ah. Oh. Which means, after the victim fell to the floor, he couldn't possibly have written anything. Oh, later, B. Thanks for being here. Because he was already dead. It's not the only reason, either. There's, o there's something else we found in Mr. Osogi's cabin. A remnant of something that couldn't possibly have been there 
if what Miss Pavlova told us was true. Are they talking about the bell? Good night, Rafkin. Thanks for being here. Like, this can't be... The case can't be closed at this point. This can't be the resolution to the whole thing. We still have so many pieces that don't add up. The ship's log... of glass. So Suzato-san has noticed it too then. Something else that gives the truth away. Oh, later, Lastborn. Dang, everyone's leaving. I'm just trying to get to a place to stop. Another piece of evidence that proves this was no accident. In other words... I'm going to save because I'm really not sure about this. Yes. This, this piece of broken glass next to the mark on the floor. That's the glass bell the kitten had around its neck. We already know all about that. It was broken in half when the victim tripped over the cat and fell. So we already have a satisfactory explanation. Where's the flaw in that logic? Like, I get that they're questioning how it made it back to this room. But... Unfortunately, there's a very big flaw. A fatal flaw. If that's really what happened... Then how did one half of the bell end up back here in this cabin? I'm gonna be honest here. I think it's hypothetically possible that it could have just, you know, stayed stuck to the collar. Part of it broke off and part of it was hanging on by a thread or two. Ugh. Yes, remember that we found the other half of the glass bell in that waste paper basket. Would you care to explain that, Miss Pavlova? Oh, no. Both these pieces of evidence clearly point to the same conclusion. That when Mr. Osogi died last night in his cabin, there was someone else in the room. And that same person deliberately arranged the scene to disguise the truth. In order to cover up his or her own guilt. Is this really going to be the conclusion? Yes, there was someone else present in Mr. Asogi's... Or wasting time. Someone else was there? No, ah, of course, we know this. What are you talking about? Bulkhead was bolted shut from inside. There was no way in or out. Oh, yes. And only other person in cabin when young Soon died was you. Yes. It's true, I was in the cabin when it happened. You were shut inside the cabin wardrobe, to be precise about the details. But I don't know... But I don't know Russian. There's no way I would have left that message. Not would have, there's no way you could have left that message, to be precise about the details. No, he's got a point. You should be more precise here. Forgive me, my dear fellow. As I was saying, the person in question wrote the word wardrobe on the Rus in Russian on the floor. And in an attempt to incriminate me for in an attempt to incriminate me for the crime, even though I had been asleep in there the entire time. And then the same person picked up the broken glass bell that had fallen onto the floor for fear of it becoming evidence that would show how Mr. Asogi really died. 
But why wouldn't this person have taken all of the pieces of the glass of the bell away? Leaving half behind was always going to raise questions. Yes, um, it was past one o'clock in the early hours of the morning. The cabin would have been quite dark. No, he was awake writing in his journal. There are no windows on this cabin. We have established this previously, so, um, it would be just as light in there as it is right now. As far as I can tell. The single small lamp suspended from the ceiling would barely have cast any light onto the floor there. Little wonder, then, that the culprit failed to notice a fragment of the tiny item. You all suspect me, don't you? Seaman... Seaman Stroganoff? Ina is woman of sea. She is daughter of strong sailor. Two years ago, they noticed our dancing skills, and she went away to join ballet company. But before, she was dancer on this ship, a member of ship's band. You do not accuse ship's angel of being criminal. Ah, so that's it. You say that when young student died, Nina was there in cabin. But that is not possible. I give my tooth. This is all. This is almost interesting. And why would you give your tooth, pray? How can you be so sure? You are a great detective. You should know. Look through the eyes. Cabin bulkhead was bolted shut from inside. Nobody could go into cabin. Not Nina. Not anyone. Or you want to tell me that killer can walk through locked doors? Yet, it is, it is impossible. He's right. But wait, I've read about this in detective stories. People often tie a thread. Wait. We've been through this before. It wasn't possible. You established that it's impossible. Thread, are you stupid? These bulkheads are not barn doors. Certainly not. These are watertight doors, as one would expect to find on any modern ship. Constructed of heavy steel with not a gap in sight. No threads or needles or magnets could have been used. No, no, of course not. I thought so too. But Mr. Naruhor... Really, you're blaming me? So Seaman Stroganov has a valid point. The cabin door couldn't have been bolted shut from the outside. Not necessarily. What? I put it to you that I could bolt this cabin door without laying a finger on it. And in this very cabin, we can see the traces of the method I have in mind having been used before. I don't believe it. Well, Mr. Naruhoto, I believe you know what I mean, don't you? A way to shut the bolt of the cabin from the outside. One way does spring to mind, yes. Do you really know what Mr. Sholmes means, Mr. Naruhoto? Yes, and so should you. <laughs> because we've seen it happen. Indeed we have, so would you care to do the honors, Mr. Naruhoto? Point out the telling signs. Yeah, we can't actually cause it to happen because we would have to go out into the hall. Look at the bookcase there. See how all the books and things have toppled over? That must have happened when the ship made its emergency stop before. Yes, that's right. It's a very powerful vessel, after all. When the engines are thrown into reverse, a violent jolt goes across the entire ship. Any small objects that aren't fastened down are bound to fall over. I believe... Yes, it's what's known as the force of inertia acting on the objects. There is so much Suzato doesn't know. Well, whatever it's called, the same force that pushed over those books on the bookcase also made something else in this cabin move. The bolt on the cabin door. 
It was very obvious just after the emergency stop that the ship made earlier. We had come into this cabin not long before and we hadn't bolted the door. But then... Hello. Hello, is anybody in there? Inspector Hosanaka. Oh yes! That's it. When the ship stopped suddenly, the bolt flew across and locked the door. Yes, it's made of metal, but it's small and light enough to be moved by the ship's sudden change of speed. Or the force of ineptia, as you want if you want to call it. <laughs> Are you trying to say that last night, after Mr. Asogi was killed, Wait, so is the headache that everyone is reporting due to the sudden stop? Did everyone just spontaneously bash their head in their sleep and no one woke up and mer and noticed it? The SS Baria made another emergency stop? When I woke up this morning and looked around the cabin, I thought it looked a little odd. All the books on the shelves had toppled over. All the ordnance. It was almost as if someone had run their hand across the shelves and deliberately knocked everything over. Yes, I remember that. And I stood them up again, didn't I? Then we came into this cabin and we were surprised to see the same thing in here. All the books and everything had toppled over, just like in Mr. Asoki's cabin. Do you have anything to say about this, Miss Pavlova? Are you out of mind? You say Buria made emergency stop. Does seem a little far-fetched. How could that possibly have happened? Unless you're saying that the culprit is actually from someone from the engine room. Oh, it's simple enough. Hmm? Why are you forgetting the button in the passageway outside? Used to trigger the emergency alarm. Oh yes, of course. There was a notice, wasn't there, telling you only to press the button in times of emergency. On dark nights when the fog is dense, the captain cannot afford to rely on the eyes of his lookout alone. Hence the placement of a number of buttons around the vessel to allow any crewman to raise the alarm. Sort of button one is almost compelled to press to satisfy one's curiosity. Wait, it was you? When the button is pressed, two things happen in the interest of safety. The emergency alarm bell rings, and the vessel comes to a complete stop. As indeed it did a little earlier today. Mr. Sholmes, surely it wasn't you who... As I always say, a button has but one purpose in life. To be pressed, whatever the occasion. He sounds almost proud of himself. How dare you mess with ship? I report you to captain. You are in much trouble now. Not now, I'm sh now, now. I'm sure that can all wait till later. Let us not overlook the fact that we have now learned a valuable lesson. When the vessel makes an emergency stop, the bolts on the cabin doors slide closed. So, what we must now consider... Yes, it all comes down to one thing now. Last night, after what happened to Mr. Asogi, did this ship make an emergency stop, or did it not? You are idiots! Korea is a huge ship with many passengers. If we make emergency stop, even in the middle of night, then it would be chaos everywhere. What are your thoughts, Mr. Naruhoto? Well, it's certainly possible that some kind of emergency happened last night. We have the evidence to support that idea. Really? What evidence? Fascinating. Do show us, my good man. Yes! 
Seaman Stroganoff. It's your duty to patrol the first class area of the ship, isn't that right? Da, that is correct. What? And this, and the ship's log here, this would be where you record the details of your duties. What are you doing with that? That is mine. Ah, you rather carelessly left it atop the, ma the little makeshift bureau in the passageway out there. But as responsible passengers, we took it into our care with a mind to return it to you later. I left it there on purpose. That is where I put it, always. The point is, look at what you usually record. It's clear that under normal circumstances, you write the phrase nothing, the phrase nothing to report every 30 minutes. But from 2 o'clock last night until first light this morning, nothing was recorded at all. Nothing recorded in the log. That is... Nah, because nothing happened. But if nothing happened, you would normally write nothing to report, wouldn't you? Oh. Indeed so, which tells us that shortly after 2 a.m., something happened here aboard the SS Beria. Something sufficiently significant to make you forget to fill in the ship's log, in fact. Are you suggesting that the ship really did make an emergency stop in the middle of the night? Stop talking rubbish! I'm perfectly honest. I find that a little hard to believe myself. Oh, why? Well, because if something as major as an emergency stop really had happened, surely all of us would have noticed? It's very true. Thanks to the emergency stop we experienced earlier, we know what it feels like now. The ship lurched so violently, and the alarm bell was so loud. I can't imagine that anybody would sleep through that, even if it happened in the dead of night. Well, no, that's a good point. What of the throbbing? Sorry, what do you mean? Your head, man. The throbbing of your head since this morning. We've all suffered with it. Oh, yes, I've had a headache, you're right. In fact, I haven't been feeling myself since I woke up today. Nor have I. My head has been feeling heavy ever since dawn. Yes, you've all been afflicted, haven't you? Just as I suspected. And since eating dinner yesterday, everything has felt sort of hazy. I can't really remember anything that happened after I climbed back inside the wardrobe. And the first thing I noticed this morning was the throbbing pain in my head. I had already been dragged out of the wardrobe and had those handcuffs put on me by that point. Why didn't I wake up when all that was happening to me? Tell me, Mr. Naruhodo, you boarded this vessel as a stowaway, didn't you? Well, yes. Sorry. The stowaway class of accommodation doesn't usually include meals. What did you survive on? Well, Kazuma looked after me. He was always happy to share his meals. So he enjoyed some of the whole roast chicken dish that was served yesterday evening, I take it. Yes, in fact, I had all of that. Kazuma wasn't fond of chicken. Oh, really? So the victim didn't eat any of the chicken at all? That's right, he didn't touch it. Is that relevant? Are you about to make an argument about the chemicals in chicken and turkey and such that affect tiredness? My dear fellow, does that not strike you? Mr. Sholmes, do you mean to say that there was something wrong with the chicken? I do. No, really? Is that really true? 
The meal prepared for passengers last night had been tampered with. Tampered with by the addition of a soporific designed to induce a very deep slumber in those who consumed it. A sleeping drug? Do you mean... Whoever did this laced every meal with a sleeping drug so no one would notice the ship's emergency stop? Mr. Naruhoto, of course that's not what Mr. Sholmes means. What a far-fetched idea. Precisely. Lacing every meal of a passenger on board with a soporific drug would certainly be impossible. Unless, that is, every single member of the crew was a conspirator. They drugged everyone to get her onto the ship. What? Mr. Sholmes. Well, Seaman? Ugh. <coughs> I'm sorry to say that any more deception in this matter will get you nowhere. If you refuse to talk, there would have to be an inquiry made through the shipping company, of course. And we were that, and were that to happen, every member of the crew and the captain himself would be hauled over the coals for aiding and abetting a renegade. Please, no more. I will tell everything. Yeah. I cannot make problems like this. For everyone anymore. These crewmen are your former comrades, I believe. Duh. So when I decided to run away, I asked them to help me. We all agreed to help. Everyone together. She threw away everything. Her fame in the ballet. Mother Russia. We wanted to help our angel. I don't believe it. You are right. We put sleeping drug in chicken last night. Yes, I remember now. I didn't notice chewing on a lump of something strange and bitter at one point. Da, we could not make old drug. But you say dissolve. Talk about a heavy seasoning. <laughs> at midnight, in waters near Shanghai, we brought our angel on board. She was helped by comrade on shore with small fishing boat. While all the passengers of the SS Beria slept soundly, thanks to the almost magical effects of the slumber-inducing potion their evening meals had contained. So if that's what happened, the only people awake on the ship last night were the crew, people who dislike chicken, and the newly boarded passenger, Miss Pavlova. And that means it would have been possible for you we could have used the emergency stop trick to lock Kazuma's door. Well, she wouldn't have known, but the crew would have. But how does that make sense? Surely having every cabin door would have ended up locked in that case. There would have been complete chaos. Oh, I wouldn't say so. What? Ah, of course. Just like us, all the other passengers would have eaten their evening meal of chicken in their cabins. After which, they would have been overwhelmed by tiredness because of the sleeping drug. Quite. And accordingly, all passengers were already in their cabins for the night. Yes. The overwhelming majority of passengers would habitually slept, sleep with their cabin doors bolted anyway. And not one of them would have found it remarkable to find the door locked in the morning. In summary... In order to fasten the bolt of a single cabin door on the ship, the culprit brought the entire vessel to, a, to an emergency stop in the early hours of the morning. You have talked a long time and said many things. What is point? The point is what I said earlier. 
there was somebody else present on the scene when the victim lost his life last night. Someone who left a message in Russian on the floor in an attempt to incriminate another. Someone who tried desperately to hide the broken fragments of glass that would reveal the culprit's identity. And someone who abused the ship's emergency stop procedure in order to lock a door. All told, a busy night. But, but... I... I don't know about any of this. I'm just a little girl. You like to speak with your long English words and explain your clever ideas. But I am sailor, and sailors don't listen to long, boring stories. We don't believe. Sailors like me, we trust only what we see with our eyes. A laudable trait. What? I'm quite of the same disposition, my good man. Observation to me is everything. Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, yes? Do you hear it? The accusatory cry of guilt on the wind? What accusatory cry of guilt? Sorry, you've lost me. <laughs> Proof of the invo proof of involvement, man, but you ha can't hear such a call with your ears. No, you must hear it with your eyes, for observation is the basis of all deduction. What are you talking about? I believe the time has come. For one final logic and reasoning spectacular to expose the truth. Okay. Ugh. This is taking so much longer than I thought. Of these two prevaricators... If you remember, Mr. Naruhoto, we know that somebody tried to fabricate evidence by tampering with the scene of Mr. Asogi's death some trace of evidence that one of these two was where it happened. Precisely. You are delightfully quick to grasp my meaning. Alright, I'll see what I can see. Evidence that shows someone was there last night when Kazuma died. Oh my gosh. I wish there was sensory and movement controls. I'm pretty sure... Okay, I guess it's not inverted. For some reason I thought, but... Yes! <clears throat> Seaman Stroganoff? You seem to have quite a large purple stain on the back of your white uniform there. Eh? Ah, yes, I am... Um, I don't know where the dart comes from. So nothing in particular comes to mind about the stain? What are you trying to say? It would appear that the significance of the stain has escaped your attention, Seaman. Allow us to make it plain. It's a very large purple stain on the back of Seaman Stroganov's uniform, and I think what made it is clear. Indeed it is. So Mr. Naruhodo, present the evidence that proves it. My pleasure. Yes, it's this photograph and the ink it shows. That's what caused the stain on your uniform. Ink? A rather unusual color of ink, purple. Ah! Ah, the penny drops at last. Now you see the significance. 
The Russian word on the floor next to the victim's body was written in purple ink. And the stain on the back of your uniform is ink of exactly the same color. If the ink had been dry, it couldn't possibly have stained your uniform in that way. Which means... You must have been present in the cabin in the moments immediately after the ink was spilt. Alright, yes. It was me. I did it. Everything. I arranged everything in Dead Student's cabin to make it look like Wardrobe Man did it. Then I pressed button to make Baria do emergency stop and bolt cabin door shut. I did everything so no one would suspect our angel. Beef, please. Don't worry, angel. Let me do talking. I was af It was after one in the morning. I was on duty patrolling passageway. Then our angel came to me. She was white like sheep. If please, you must help me. I went with her. The door to cabin number one was open. When I looked inside, I saw student boy on floor. What, what happened here? Please. Don't tell anyone. My little one. My little furry friend. Everything that happened in cabin is like Angel told you. The kitten escaped through ventilator into Mr. Asogi. The kitten escaped through the ventilator into Mr. Asogi's cabin. Then he tripped over it and broke his neck when he fell to the floor. Yes, that is right. So after the incident when the cat ran away, Miss Pavlova then visited the cabin next to hers? Only to find its occupant lying lifeless on the floor. She said she was worried when she heard some sounds of something falling on the floor. That's when she went to look. No, Angel? No, Angel? The door was not locked. She opened to look and you already know what happened after. There's just one thing, if you two wouldn't mind. What? When you went to Mr. Osogi's cabin, Miss Pavlova, was he already dead? Why? I already told you. When Nina opened the door of student's cabin and looked inside, I was asking Miss Pavlova. Well, Miss Pavlova? Bah. Yes, that is right. I saw him. It was dark and he was wearing black, but he was on the floor, not moving. I was scared. I understand, and I believe you. So is that finally it now? Have we discovered the real truth about Kazuma's death at last? Ah, something very nearly slipped my mind. Oh, Mr. Sholmes? This photograph. Yes, I took this myself, you know. The cause of death was a broken neck. Therefore, the victim died instantly. In the unfortunate incident that precipitated these events, a kitten on which the victim stumbled. However, if those are the facts, there is one particular area in this photograph that seems to me somewhat unnatural. He's lying on his front not his back. What do you mean, unnatural? What are your thoughts on the matter, Mr. Naruhoto? Oh, well...
Okay, I do need to save here because I'm I'm guessing that I'm right. I'm guessing that he should have landed on his back. But I don't know where to point to to establish that. Which part of this photographic print seems unnatural? Is it his face? Yes. Are they talking about the written word? Because they've already explained that. Russian clearly wasn't written by Kazuma, so if you're looking for something unnatural, that's the obvious point. Very true, it is certainly peculiar, but it's not what I meant by unnatural, I'm afraid. That particular crass detail that particularly crass detail was orchestrated by the culprit. I mean to identify another point. Oh, I see. Imagine, if you will, losing your footing yourself. In my opinion, if you landed as the victim appears to have done here, it would be most unnatural, I'm sure. You'll reach the same conclusion. How thoughtful you are, Mr. Sholmes. Thank you for your gentle guidance. Is it the clenched fist? Is this implying that he was fighting? Yes. Alright, if he really fell due to an unfortunate accident, then this fist just doesn't seem quite right. The exact same thought occurred to me. In a fall, one's instinct is to open the palms flat. Yet here we see the victim, with his left hand tightly balled into a fist. Almost, you might say, as though he were gripping something. What do you mean? Simply that I took the liberty of investigating the victim's fist a short while ago. You did? And what, pray, do you imagine I found there, my dear fellow? Am I going to have to guess? Because I really have no idea. Why, of course, my dear madam, why would I keep you in suspense? It's only my favorite thing to do. This is what I found. A crescent moon with a little gemstone in the middle? Yes, you're right, a crescent moon. It's very pretty, but what does it tell us? It tells us nothing. Oh my. It's identical to the one on her ear. Which means she did just straight up murder him.
does the crescent moon mean? Oh, where did it come from? I mean, it came from her right ear. Yes! Miss Pavlova, I noticed that on your ear, even though you have a metal earring, the decorative part of it seems to be missing. The little link holding it on must have broken, I suppose. Yeah, what? But looking at your other ear, I notice a crescent moon. Oh, I notice a crescent moon. I don't believe. I don't believe it. Now, the missing crescent moon was found in the victim's clenched fist. Clearly, there is only one logical conclusion. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Naruhodo? Yes. Miss Pavlova, Mr. Osogi must have grasped that crescent moon and pulled it from your ear. Perhaps just moments before he fell to the floor. In other words... Last night, in Mr. Asogi's cabin, you witnessed the, the moment when the victim fell with your own eyes. Oh, and Sailor Dude is getting all shifty-eyed. In fact, you were quite literally at arm's length from him. But then the question is, why did Mr. Asogi do that? Why did he pull your earring from your ear and hold it in his clenched fist during his final moments? Oh no. Angel? No one can protect you now. Please, Miss Pavlova, tell us the truth. Last night, what did what did you do to Kazuma? Ah. Yet. I think that was Russian for no. When I think about everything that happened yesterday, it was too much. Running away... Uh, running away at the fishing boat in the middle of the night, trying to climb onto this huge ship. And then, when I was at last in this cabin and I could relax after this horrible long day... Darka, wait! I couldn't believe it when she disappeared through the, the ventilator. I tried to call her with a little whistle. I tried waving her favorite toy. But nothing worked. Darka would not come back. This time of night, Inspector. Oh. I'm sorry. I thought it was a friend of mine. The young man from your country. He was very polite and kind. He helped me to find Darka, and he promised not to tell anyone. But then, when I had my friend in my arms again, and I was going to leave the man's cabin. Just a moment, sorry, but... Oh, yes? I'm sure I know your face. I've seen you somewhere before. Ah. Oh, of course. You're Nikolina Pavlova, aren't you? The Russian ballerina? Huh? No, no. I don't know that name. My heart nearly stopped when he said that. He knew who I was. How could this man from a faraway land in... From a faraway east... From a land in the faraway east know a Russian ballerina? Yes, I saw your performance in Japan. The beauty of the ballet made a deep impression on me. 
But what are you doing on this ship? I'm sure I read that your ballet company was performing in Shanghai at the moment. I can't fool him. I have to tell him the truth and hope he doesn't tell anyone. I have no other choice. Hmm, I see. So you've run away. Please, please keep my secret. Don't tell anyone. Give me a moment. I could use another opinion here. He's going to pull that cord. He's going to tell the captain. Why did I think I could trust him? Then it happened. Everything at once. It was only a second, but it felt like forever. Wait, I shouted, and then... Darka jumped out of my arms, down to the young man's feet, and... As he turned around to look at me, I... I pushed him. I don't even know why. I don't know why I did it. I was just so scared. And I had to stop him from telling anyone about me. And that's when you went to fetch help from, Se from Seaman Stroganov, who was on duty out in the passageway. I heard Nina cry out and thought on the f and thought on floor. So I ran to her. She was standing at cabin door, shaking like leaf. She looked at me and said, Help me, Beef. If they find out, I will be. Please, I have nowhere to go. So you decided to help. And that's when you arranged things in Cosima's cabin to make it look like I did it. So that no one would suspect the passenger in the cabin next door. Yes. I went into cabin. And looked around to make sure that there was nothing to show Ni nothing to show Nina was there. And then I found Stowe in wardrobe, still sleeping. So you worked out a plan to lay the blame on the stowaway. I closed wardrobe doors and put back strange paper sign. Luckily for me, that's the only reason Suzato san started to believe me when I said I was innocent. I dragged the young man's body to good place and used ink that was spilling to write on floor. I wrote wardrobe so that person who found him would look inside wardrobe and find stowaway. And tell me, what of the glass bell? It was by my feet, so I picked it up. I see. But it was dark in the cabin. I didn't notice the other half. Then Angel went back to her cabin, and I finished job. By pressing the emergency alarm button in the hall, in the passageway. Yes. Accordingly, the SS barrier did indeed come to an emergency halt. A little after 2 a.m., thus enticing the bolt on the cabin door to slide shut, creating the locked room mystery. There's still one thing I don't understand, Miss Pavlova. What? Well, you said that you ta told Kazuma about the fact that you'd run away from your homeland. It's because you were worried he was going to tell the captain that you pushed him. Isn't that right? Yes. But even if he had pulled the bell cord and called for the captain of the ship, aren't you friends with every member of the crew? Why would that have been a problem? It was what he said first that made me scared. What he said first? Oh. 
What are you doing here at this time? What are you doing here at this time of night, Inspector? Oh. I'm sorry. I thought it was a friend of mine. He said an inspector was his friend. Ah, uh, yes, meaning me. He was supposed to be acting as his bodyguard. I thought that if police knew about me, they would arrest me. So before he could pull bell cord, I... May I stop you a moment, please, Miss Pavlova? It just doesn't seem to make sense. I mean, was Mr. Osogi really going to pull the bell cord? I don't know. Huh. He was going to talk to Ryo. Ryu. What do you think, Mr. Naruhoto? Well, I'm not Kazuma, so I can't know for certain, but... He was a man of his word. If he told you he wouldn't give your secret away, then he wouldn't have done. No, he, he was walking over to it. He was going to pull the cord. He was going to make them send me back. Well, Mr. Naruhoto, the day's work is not yet done, it seems. There is one more deduction to make. What? Another deduction? Yes. What action was the victim really about to take at that moment? Can we determine whether the young man's gaze was directed? I think we all know where this is going. at the bed. He was going to go back to bed. Take that! Considering everything that had happened last night, certainly it may have looked as though Kazuma was going to ring the bell cord. Yes, however... What is directly beside the bell cord? The wardrobe. The wardrobe? And more importantly, what was inside the wardrobe? The man's great friend, sleeping soundly. Ugh! Miss Pavlova, please, think back very carefully. What were Mr. Asogi's last wor exact words last night? Give me a moment. I could use another opinion here. Another opinion? Yes, but not from a member of the crew. No, Mr. Asogi intended to insult his close friend on the matter. To see if between them... They might be able to help in some way, no doubt. Oh no. Sadly, we can't know the truth for certain now. It's too late for that. But I wish you had made sure of what Mr. Sogi was doing, was looking at. Things may have ended very differently, if you had. Okay, so. Yeah, um. I think we can call this manslaughter? There was not intent to kill. But then again, she did directly take an action that caused the death. And there was conspiracy to conceal it, but 
I don't know what the technical term for that is. Miss Pavlova? I want to thank you for finally admitting the truth. But unfortunately, the truth is a man lost his life because of what you did. And that will never change. I hope you'll never forget that. I'm sorry. Really, I'm so, so sorry. What have I done? And so, at long last, the mystery surrounding the tragic accident on the SS Beria is finally laid to rest. Seven fourteen p.m. Passageway outside the first class cabins. What will happen to Miss Pavlova now, then? Once we re reach Great Britain, she'll be handed over to the police at the British police at Scotland Yard. But about the fact that she ran away from Russia, won't the Russians try to repatriate her? Apparently, the English detective can speak to the immigration office and sort all that out. Mr. Sholmes can do that? So she won't be going back to Russia, then? No, I don't think so. Even if she wanted to return in the future, I doubt she would be able to. She ran away, so now she's in exile for life. I see. I'm sorry. Seaman Strokinoff? I wanted to help our angel, no matter what. But I didn't think about you. About how you lost good friend. I will go with Nina. I will give myself to the British police. That's kind of you. In the meantime, thank you for letting me go free again. Kazuma's death feels like such a waste, but... Well, do what you can for Miss Pavlova, won't you? Bah. Well, I'm afraid you need to pack now. We're due to arrive in Hong Kong tomorrow. As much as it pains me, I'm going to have to hand you over to the consul and arrange your passage back to Japan. Yes, I did stow away, after all. I couldn't really expect any different. So, you should get back to your cabin now. Looks like my study tour to Great Britain is over before it's even begun, then. To think that only days ago, Kazuma and I were laughing together about how we'd tear up the streets of London. It seems like a distant memory now. Oh, what's that? Is it someone... weeping? Susato-san? Please don't stab me. Maruhodo-san, I didn't know you had returned. Oh, well, I haven't been back long. Spectre Hosunaga just told me I should pack. You know, ready to leave the ship tomorrow and all that. I still can't believe this has happened. I can't believe someone's life can be over just like that. Suzato-san. He had such grand ideas for this visit to Great Britain. So many dreams. And now they've been cruelly taken away, just as he has. I thought I could never forgive the person responsible. But now... Now we know the truth, that it was just an accident. It was a silly series of mishaps. It's too much, Naruhodo-san. It's just too much. 
Yes, I know. Wish there was something I could say. Inspector. My duty was to see Asogi-san safely to Great Britain, but I failed, and caused his two closest friends great pain and suffering as a result. I've let everyone down. I will do anything to make up for my terrible blunder. Nobody blames you, Inspector. And I'm free again. Okay, we really don't need comic relief in here. This is a pretty serious moment. Surprised, Mr. Narahodo? What is the meaning of this? <laughs> oh, a trifling matter. Simply that in my head, I think I shall always picture you wearing those shackles. Without them, the balance seems all wrong. It's distracting. Sorry? So I decided to restore them, for old time's sake, shall we say. You are a stowaway, after all. He thinks this is funny? Mr. Sholmes. We do appreciate all your assistance. I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. No. Oh. Not at all, not at all. And though it's late, may I offer my sincere condolences. The loss of your companion is truly heartrending. I hope that you will be able to fulfill some of his aspirations in his honor. I'm afraid that won't be possible. We shall be disembarking at the next port in Hong Kong. We have to return to Japan and make a full report about everything that's happened. What? Wait a minute. It's just me that has to go back, isn't it? I mean, I was the stowaway. They were all stowaways. The terms of this study tour were negotiated by the Department of Justice in both Great Britain and Japan. It was to be one lawyer and one assistant was to be. In the light of Mr. Asogi's unfortunate death, I'm afraid the study tour can no longer go ahead. Oh no, I don't care for me, but... Poor Susato-san. My dear fellows, the majority of the problems have an extremely simple solution, you know. All you require is one lawyer and the study tour can continue, surely? But there is no one else with the necessary qualifications, Mr. Sholmes. We know of no other lawyer. Qualifications, you say? Any qualifications obtained in your own country will be of little value in Great Britain, I'm afraid. Oh, but... But anyway, the voyage to London still promises a good month of time. Ample opportunity, I would say, to find yourselves another suitable lawyer. Yes. Um, Miss Suzato. Yes? Do you think perhaps I might be able to do it? Huh. But you're not a lawyer, Mr. Naruhoda. Oh, unless... Are you studying law? No, I'm not, but... I'm sorry, in that case, I don't think there's even a chance it could work. But as I said, there's still more than a month before we reach England's shores. Isn't that right, Mr. Naruhoda? Yes, I have a month in which to study, to learn what I must to become a lawyer in Great Britain. <laughs> Mr. Naruhoda... That's ridiculous! Are you seriously suggesting anybody could learn all of that in just 40 days? There's only one way to find out. I would work my fingers to the bone, Inspector. Every single day. Will you let me try? And if by the time we reach Great Britain, I haven't learned enough to be recognized as a lawyer, I'll take whatever punishment is deemed appropriate. 
But why put yourself in such a difficult position? For Kazuma. He said that there was something he had to do in Great Britain, and that he would sacrifice anything to make it happen. He was passionate about it. I can't let all that passion just come to nothing. And anyway, it's for my own benefit too. I will become a lawyer. I have to. What do you say, Miss Suzato? I think it's a wonderful idea, okay, but please never talk to me straight on because your mouth is terrifying. Like, the way her mouth moves is so weird. Thank you. So, what does our bespectacled inspector friend say? Are you serious? One lawyer and one assistant. The numbers are indisputable. No, 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 it's madness. Yet fascinating, wouldn't you agree? Fascinating? Duty and rules are the dull routine of existence that we all abhor. Give us interest, give us fascination. Speak for yourself. Besides, Qualifications are no measure of a man. What matters is his character, no? And you've witnessed ample evidence of this man's exemplary character today with your own eyes. From the early hours of this morning until this very moment now, despite contending with the passing of his close companion and despite the accusation of guilt, this man has shown resourcefulness Intelligence, and above all, courage. <sighs> Very well. I'll think of a clever way to word my report to the Department of Justice. Inspector. After all, I did just make a promise, didn't I? I said that I'd do anything at all to make up for my shortcomings here. Oh, thank you, Inspector. Yeah, she's far less uncomfortable to look at when she's talking. In fact, I think all of them might be a little bit uncanny when they talk, but she's especially uncanny because she never shows teeth. I think that's it. If you'll excuse me, I must pay a visit to the captain's quarters, I think. I need to discuss what to do next, how best to make my report. Are you really prepared to attempt this, Mr. Naruhodo? Yes, I'm going to try. I wonder, would you consider teaching me what I need to know? Everything about being a lawyer? Somehow, I imagine that she doesn't know as much as Kazuma did. <laughs> I would be delighted to help you. I am a judicial assistant, after all. Thank you. And, Mr. Naruhodo, I'd like you to take charge of this. What? Me? Are you sure? Are you sure? I'm sure it's what Kazuma-sama would have wanted. Its name is Karuma. It's a great sword that's been in the Asogi clan for generations. Very well, I accept. I'll treasure it always. So then, Miss Susato, it seems we'll be working together for some time to come yet. It will be an honor, Mr. Naruhodo. And for the next 40 days, I shan't grant you a single minute of freedom. We shall fill every spare moment with study. Yes, that's exactly what I need. But, before we begin, I have an earnest favor to ask of you two. Goodness, what is it? 
I hope it's something to do with food. My guy hasn't eaten all day. <sighs> he hasn't eaten since one meal last night, and who knows when the last time he ate before that was. Please throw me to the ground. Three times. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she did it four times to me, but I must have deserved it at least once. What? I should never have doubted you. You were Kazuma-sama's closest friend. Of course you would never have done anything to hurt him. That should have been obvious to me from the start. But I allowed suspicion to get the better of me. And no matter how upset I was feeling, it was completely unforgivable behavior. No, no, you were in shock. You just found out about me stowing away. The cabin door was locked from the inside. No, I won't let you make excuses for me. Whatever the circumstances, I should never have thrown you. And not just once, but five times. <laughs> that number keeps creeping up, doesn't it? Please, you must. Just take hold of me and throw me. Do it. Don't even think about it. No, no, no. I don't even know how I've never thrown anyone in my life. I have a sword. I can stab you if you like, but... It, like, none of this seems like the Canadian thing to do, okay? Very wise, Mr. Naruhoto. It isn't a skill one acquires without considerable training. Oh, Mr. Shones. I observed your throwing technique several times with great interest. I must confess I was most impressed. When did he see that? I presume that would be a form of Japanese wrestling? Oh, well, in a way, it's not wrestling but my own interpretation of an ancient jujutsu te jiu jitsu technique. Apparently it's called the Suzato Takedown. It leaves your head swimming, believe me. Hmm. How beguiling. I'm a practitioner of the combat of arts myself. I'm a somewhat accomplished boxer. Hence the dancing. There he goes, dancing around again. I wonder if you'd be so kind as to instruct me in the technique of your arresting throw. Yes, I'd be honored. And let us not dally. Demonstrate, my dear madam. She's going to demonstrate on me instead of him, isn't she? Are you ready, Mr. Naruhoto? Sorry? I don't feel like I deserve that. As you can see, you throw from the abdomen. Oh yes, arresting indeed. That is what you and that is what you term the Susado takedown, is it? Actually, no. That was a Susato squash. In my groggy state of consciousness, a scene from an evening recently spent with Kazuma flickered into my mind. Karuma? That's right, it's a prized sword that's been passed down through generations of the Asogi clan. I can't believe you managed to get permission to bring it with you. I mean, taking a katana on a study tour is more than a little irregular, surely. A Japanese man's sword is his soul, Ryanosuke. I can't be parted from my katana. Garuma guides me, I truly believe that. So its name compels the wielder its wielder to slice evil in two? Not that you would need much not that you would need much compelling. On that subject, there's something very important that I have to do in Great Britain. I'll sacrifice anything to make it happen. I'd appreciate you seeing it through with me. Of course I will. Whatever it is, I'll see it through to the end with you. I knew you wouldn't let me down. <sighs> that important thing he had to do. I still don't know what that was. But I'm going to see the place for myself and work it out. In Great Britain's capital, London. End. Well, 
That stream went about an hour and a half over what I was planning on. Crash Course Candidate was the achievement there. And that's it. And I don't think I should dawdle because frankly... Ugh, this stream has gone well over. Folks, I appreciate y'all. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> I hope to see you next time.